What's up? Ghost Fictions is here, and we're back again. This is the first part of a story where Issei got a gamer system and became a player. Waking up to reality with a view of a system, the stats that he could see described his powers. Issei died to only be revived once more to see the world in a different view. This view was the supernatural world. The same world that killed him. But before we start, please consider subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Don't forget to check the description for more informations. Now, let's get into part 1. Could you die for me? Shooting his eyes open once more with sweat dripping down his entire face, he was met with numbers. There were countless numbers, all of them with short words next to them. The memory of her. The last words she said to him that he could process. They stayed in his mind. Gasping for breath, Issei could only be confused. He was supposed to be dead. Looking down to his bloody hands, he widened his eyes and gasped, the huge hole in his chest was gone, yet the blood that was left from the wound was still trailing down his arm. This. Doesn't. How. Flabbergasted, he could only remain silent a little longer before he spoke. I. I'm alive. I'm alive. He could only smirk slightly at the realization that he wouldn't have to go to the afterlife just yet. However, the cheerful moment was short-lived as he began remembering what caused him to be in this situation. His heart was shattered. The one thing that he wanted, the one thing that he yearned, the one thing that he so desperately needed. Was the one thing that had killed him. He only wanted the comfort, the love, the warmth of having a partner, someone that he could love. But what he got was a woman out of this world ready to rip him out of this world. Everything was supposed was going smoothly. Yet, Issei knew that something was off. It was just. Too easy. The smile that she gave. It never left even throughout the entire date. It just. Gave him a bad feeling, and he should have trusted his gut and left. Everything that he did, all the perverted thoughts, the perverted tricks, and the perverted situations that he would get into, they would bring women to drive their presence away from him. Yet, this woman that he never had seen once had decided that she had a crush on him, and wanted to go out with him. The signs were there. Why? Why did I ever think that this world would be kind to me? None of this. Would have happened if I ever thought with my head. Gripping onto his head in frustration and clenching his teeth with tears rolling down his face, Issei could only look up into the sky, while holding back from crying his heart out. I never thought. I never thought it would come to this. Crying with pain in his heart. Issei would never trust anyone ever again. Beginning to calm down slightly. There was only one thought in his mind. The world would always go against him. That woman. I will. Squeezing his hands into a fist, he began clenching them with all his might. His fists began turning red from the sheer pressure he was applying, he was going to make sure that she would pay. I will get the last laugh. He didn't care about anything else. He will get his revenge. Screw being the bigger man. He will rip her to shreds. He would make her beg for mercy. And all that he would do is crush her. Closing his eyes and reopening them with a little bit more calmness to them, Issei knew that he needed to change. He couldn't view women the same anymore. No way was he going to see women as the thing that he wanted the most. He was far too terrified of what they might do again. What if they had decided to hurt him again? The chances of those are still there and knowing what type of man he was, it would certainly happen again. He didn't want to feel that pain again. He didn't want to get his heart broken again. He would change. He didn't need a man or a woman. He only needed himself. He only needed me, myself, and I. Plus one intelligence. Hearing the small ding in his head, Issei could finally begin rendering back in the stats and words in his vision. What's this? Seeing this small screen in his vision, something straight out of a video game of one of those leveling up RPG games, Issei began deciphering what everything meant. Name. Issei Haidu. Race. Human. Level. 1. Title. None. HP. 50 50ths. MP. 50 50ths. STR. 1. Bagel. 1. End. 1. Int. 2. Skill points. 0. This wasn't too hard for Issei to understand. Issei may not have been the smartest, but he could very well understand what each of these stats mean. He had played many games like these leveling up type games. But what is throwing him off is that he is. Part of one. Issei was too confused to be. Shocked or horrified. It was strange, the events that occurred beforehand had really messed with him where he only saw Ed, but now here we was standing alive and well with a new. System. Slowly, he began settling and that he would just let himself continue with his system, seeing as though it wasn't going to disappear. Seeing the blood on his hands and shirt, Issei went near the water fountain behind him and washed his hands off. He didn't care about the fountain being public property, that wasn't his concern right now. Next, he simply threw his white shirt and buttoned his other shirt on top of his original white shirt. Seeing as though his legs were still stained with blood, there was nothing that he could do about those. 
Moving towards his house, there was only a small thought in his mind. If the stats that he had looked to be in a game, could he increase his stats? Would he be able to become much stronger? These are the thoughts that he carried as he got closer to his home. He wondered. How would he explain his date dumping him to his mother? Quest. Improve. Details. Improve your stats by doing various exercises that contain physical labor. Reward. Experience points. Another message popped up in his face. He still wanted to get rid of the screen in front of him. He would deal with that after thinking what he just saw. Seeing the small text box, Issei began thinking to himself. The realization began dawning to him. It was just a thought, but now it was a full-fledged truth. He was in a simulation. He was in a game. He didn't know how to feel about this. He was so. Unaffected. He just. Didn't care anymore. He didn't feel anything from this revelation. That was when he saw a small little red box on the corner of the screen, pressing it as if he was actually pressing something, and closing the screen, Issei could only sigh in relief. Now he could see the world without that stupid annoying box in the way. Now. Onto business. The sun was still setting, and he could still experiment with this new thing he has. Strength was something that came to mind. What could increase his strength? Push-ups. Deciding to do the most basic exercise, Issei began doing a couple before he began seeing just how out of shape he was. After the seventh, he was already beginning to fail getting back up. By the tenth, he fell face flat and was already panting. Terrible display of strength by him. He did the exercise again. Just for another set of four reps until he failed again. Plus one, strength. He did it. Quest completion. Reward. Experience points. Level up. However, that wasn't his concern right now. For some reason, Issei felt as if his strength had increased drastically. It felt as if he had become much stronger even from the small increase in number on his stats. He decided to get down on the ground and do some more push-ups for a small little testing, even if he was tired. To his surprise, he was able to easily crank out 20 push-ups. This. Is incredible. His strength was much higher now. Now, he brought his attention back to the screen that popped up again. His stats had all increased. And he had one additional skill point. He wondered what he could do with that skill point and noticed a small little plus symbol in front of each stat. Pressing the plus symbol in front of agility, he added a point to agility, and the plus symbol disappeared. Interesting. Issei was amazed. Name. Issei Haidu. Race. Human. Level. 2. Title. None. HP. 100 one hundredths. MP. 75 70 fifths. STR. 3. Agle. 3. End. 2. Int. 3. Skill points. 0. Issei smirked. He could increase his stats without needing to increase his level. He could take advantage of this. But he had a feeling that there was something else that was tied to leveling up. He would get to there eventually. For now, he was going to abuse the system. It's been a couple of days. When arriving back at his home, he was greeted by his mother and father. They looked worried seeing their son without his white shirt and a stoic expression. Not trying to worry them, Issei simply said that the woman didn't want to see him again. There was no need to tell them about anything else. Back to what Issei had been doing. For the past couple of days, he had been experimenting with what he needed to do to increase his stats. Turns out, the simple stuff like push-ups and reading books weren't cutting it anymore after the first additional stat increase. So, Issei used weights to increase his stats, but it only increased his strength by one. What Issei had realized is that since his strength was increasing exponentially rather than linearly, he had to apply a more ridiculous stimulus, rather than the same one. It didn't matter how many reps of how many hours he read, he needed to up his game. What did he resort to? Quest. Open a dungeon. Details. Using the dungeon icon in the menu, open your very first dungeon. All of Issei's thoughts had been interrupted when he got his second quest. Seeing the menu screen with his stats, Issei turned his focus to the small tabs that were on the side. One of them was unlocked, he could access it, and there was a small arrow that was pointing to it. Clicking on it, the screen opened up with another text box. Dungeon Maker. Accessible Dungeons. Tutorial Dungeon. Difficulty. Very easy. Ready to create. Yes, no. Clicking on the yes button, he was immediately transported to a different area. Upon appearing in the secluded area, Ishu could only gasp upon seeing the many rocks, cracks, and large canyons that surrounded him. Standing on top of one huge hill, he was immediately blinded by the sun. It appeared as if he was currently in a desert. The desert had extended to unbelievable lengths, way beyond Issei's eyesight. This. Is going to be annoying. The heat was already taking its toll on him. Ripping his shirt off, he didn't want to be uncomfortable with whatever was going to transpire. 
knowing from regular games that dungeons mean monsters trying to kill him, Issei was a little bit terrified. He was on the lookout. Turning to see behind him, there was nothing around. However, that was when he noticed a small little fog-like substance appearing out of thin air. There were multiple of these clustered substances all around the area. In an instant, the fog disappeared and some zombies were seen standing where the fog was. Name. Zombies. Group. Race. Undead. Level. 1 to 3. HP. 0 to 150. STR. 1 to 3. Agle. 0 0.5 to 1. End. 1 to 3. The tattered clothed zombies, with many of them missing limbs and missing huge chunks of their flesh, began slowly crawling towards him. They were much slower than Issei. But this definitely had Issei terrified. He had never seen something this. Horrid. Quest. Defeat as many monsters as you want. Reward. Shop unlocked. Plus 25 bronze coins. Looking at their stats, Issei had noticed that the zombies didn't have any mana points, nor did they have any intelligence. What Issei had noticed was that intelligence is linked to mana points. What Issei could conclude is that since these zombies are already dead, they didn't have the capabilities to think properly which leads them to having no intelligence nor any mana points. While he thought of this, the zombies began approaching him extremely slowly. Backing away, Issei didn't want to attack. He was terrified. He had never needed to resort to violence. His heart rate began increasing, his body began shaking. He didn't want to approach these monsters. They slowly began approaching him. Each step that they took, one breath Issei took. However. That was when a bright little light began glowing around Issei. It began to calm him down. His body began calming down. His mind began thinking clearly. Closing his eyes, Issei began walking towards these monsters. He needed to do this. Taking another deep breath in. He could win against some of these monsters. They couldn't think and were slow. He just needed to beat them down into the ground. Looking forwards, Issei saw a scrawny zombie, easily the weakest out of the bunch. It was missing an arm and half of its neck. Rushing towards the zombie, Issei easily ran past the other ones, especially when they were moving slower than sloths. Reeling his fist back, squinting his eyes in a little bit of hesitation, Issei swung his fist and directly nailed the zombie on its messed up neck. The loud crunch could have been heard as the zombie's bones in its neck began crumbling. The zombie howled in pain while getting knocked down onto the ground. Issei hesitated a little before reeling his right leg back and kicked the zombie directly on the neck again. Issei, being much more powerful than the zombie, didn't realize what the kick would have done. The zombie was already near death from the condition the zombie was spawned with, but the two blows to the most critical areas of the zombie was too much. The zombie's head was shot off the body with the neck as Issei. Killed his first opponent. Achievement unlocked. Killed first enemy. Reward. Common weapon. Level up. Beginning to dawn on the realization of what he had done. Issei began panicking as the sounds of the other zombies began going null. As quickly as he began panicking, the white light returned and began calming him down. Issei finally began rendering in the message and saw the news of a weapon being given to him. As he finished reading the text box, he quickly noticed a flying object heading towards him. Landing right in front of him, he noticed that it was a sledgehammer. He walked through the dust ag formed from the impact of the hammer landing. Inspecting the weapon, another text box appeared on his screen. Weapon name. Sledgehammer. Rarity. Common. Attributes. Plus 1, STR. Requirements. 5 STR. Details. Regular sledgehammer. It was bizarre. The weapon was a sledgehammer, but it didn't decrease his agility. He assumed that it may have been due to the fact that since his strength was drastically increasing with each point, the weight of the sledgehammer was non-existent. Also, noticing that he leveled up, Issei, once more, poured his skill point into agility. Name. Issei Haidu. Race. Human. Idol. None. Level. 3. HP. 150 150 MP. 100 100 STR. 5, plus 1. Agle. 5. End. 3. Int. 4. He began seeing that his stats were beginning to get very uneven. His health stat was very low, while his strength stat was very high for his level. Maybe doing all those push-ups with weights for a head start wasn't a good idea. Not only that, he also saw that his strength stat was separated by the attribute stat of his hammer. So his strength stat would show his raw strength on the left and next to the stat, it would show the attribute stat bonus of his sledgehammer. Grabbing his hammer and looking at the countless zombies in front of him. There was no limit to how many he needed to kill. He was going to make sure that he would be properly prepared by using this dungeon. While Issei was going on a rampage in the dungeon, right outside of his room, his mother opened the door to see no one inside the room. Issei. 
honey. His mother's voice trembled as she scanned the room, her heart pounding with growing dread. Her eyes darted over the familiar surroundings, settling on the torn posters adorning the walls, remnants of her son's shattered heart. Each ripped piece was a testament to his pain, a pain she wished she could have shielded him from. Entering the room, the air heavy with unspoken anguish, she felt her chest tighten at the sight before her. The once vibrant posters, now torn and defaced, mirrored the turmoil within her son's soul. She knew the breakup had devastated him, but seeing the aftermath laid bare before her, brought a fresh wave of anguish. Boru. Issei isn't here. Her cry pierced through the silence, echoing with frantic urgency as she turned to seek solace in her husband's arms. Trembling with fear, her voice cracked as she uttered the words that had been haunting her since she first noticed Issei's absence. Her husband's steps thundered up the stairs, a mirrored reflection of her own racing heart. Panda clawed at his chest as he reached the threshold of their son's sanctuary, his eyes widening at the sight of his wife's distress. Without a moment's hesitation, he wrapped her in his arms, trying to steady her trembling frame amidst the storm of emotions. What do you mean he isn't here? He was just in the room a couple of minutes ago. His voice strained with worry, each word a desperate plea for reassurance. He. He. Isn't here. Her voice cracked, tears streaming down her cheeks as she clung to him, her fear consuming her with every passing second. I knew that harlot was going to hurt him. I knew that she was just a bitch on the street. We need to find a say before he does something he will regret. His heart clenched at the raw agony in her voice, his own fears threatening to overwhelm him. With a nod of determination, he made a silent vow to find their son, to bring him back home where he belonged. Just relax. I'll try and find him around town. Give me a second. Mickey. Mickey. Hey, wake up. His voice was gentle, yet firm, as he tried to rouse her from the depths of her despair. But the worry had taken its toll, and her strength gave way beneath the weight of her fear. With a soft whimper, she collapsed against him, her body limp with exhaustion and anguish. As Goru continued gently shaking his wife, Mickey, trying to rouse her from unconsciousness, his heart clenched with fear and anguish. Each passing second without knowing where their son, Issei, was, felt like an eternity of torment. They had poured all their hopes and dreams into him, cherishing him as the precious gift they'd been granted after enduring the heartbreak of miscarriages. The sight of torn posters in Issei's room, remnants of his shattered heart after being dumped, only added to their distress. Upon waking back up, Mickey only continued sobbing which echoed through the house, a testament to the depth of a mother's love and worry for her child. Boru felt a surge of helplessness, knowing that they needed to find Issei before his pain drove him to do something irreversible. With determination etched on his face, Goru promised to search every corner of the town until he found his son. Yet, beneath his facade of resolve, lay a father's trembling heart, terrified of the possibilities that awaited him. The thought of Issei, their only child, lost in a sea of emotional turmoil, sent shivers down his spine. As he gently laid Mickey down, he whispered reassurances, though his own doubts nodded him. How could they even be considered parents to Issei when they couldn't even shield him from the agony of a broken heart? The weight of parental responsibility bore down on Goru's shoulders, a heavy burden that threatened to crush him. Issei. My boy, please. Be safe. How many did he kill? 10, 20, 30. He had lost count. If he was given the choice, he was going to take advantage of grinding. Turns out, after his first kill, his next level up happened after killing five zombies. They gave the same experience point no matter what the level of zombie it was, because of how they weren't a threat due to their slowness. Name. Issei Haidu. Race. Human. Idol. None. Level. 7. HP. 500 five hundredths. MP. 225 225 fifths. STR. 9. Plus 1. Bagle. 9. End. 10. Int. 9. Skill points. 0. He had leveled up 5 times since he first came here. However, on his screen, there was a small skull icon that was unlocked after he had reached level 5. He didn't know what it did and didn't want to find out just yet. However, his curiosity began to overwhelm him, and he decided to click on the skull icon. Boss summoning conditions have been met. Do you wish to summon the boss? Yes no. Clicking yes, Issei was curious of what the boss would look like. It couldn't have been much more powerful than him. Right. Maybe he was being a little too overconfident, but he did feel as though he could take on the boss. The same fog began resurfacing the area and clustered up into a small sphere in front of Issei. The color of the fog was golden, differentiating from the other mobs around it. What came out was a disgusting giant. With three heads sticking out of its neck, all bundled up with the two side heads missing one eyes each. But the tattered clothing barely stained together while its mutated body, filled with rotten flesh that sometimes exposed the bones of the monster. 
Standing easily three times taller than him, Issei watched as the beast walked with its four limbs towards him at a much quicker rate than the mobs before it. Name. Gargantua. Race. Undead. Level. 5. HP. 600 600s. STR. 11. Agle. 2. End. 12. Issei was two levels above him. Since host is higher level than the monster, debuffs and buffs will apply. Minus 20% damage received. Plus 20% damage dealt to opponent. Oh, this was another thing that Issei enjoyed. When he would be a higher level than a monster, depending on the number of levels he is above multiplied by 10% is how much damage he would reduce and how much more damage he would deal. It would probably also go against him if he were to fight something more powerful and higher level than him. This really made whoever is in a disadvantage to be truly losing hope if the level difference is vast. Issei rushed towards the monster, trying to take advantage of the monster's slowness. Dodging the fist that was flying at him and swinging his hammer, Issei nailed the monster's hips. Dealing some damage, but the monster remained standing. Once turning towards Issei, the monster swung its disorientated arm around. Due to the sheer size and the abrupt movement, Issei wasn't able to dodge in time and was struck straight on. Being sent flying back from the sheer strength that the monster held, Issei skid across the sand as he came to a halt with blood oozing out of Hus' mouth. Just a single blow. Even with the debuffs applied, he took this much damage. Getting back to his feet. He noticed that his health pool decreased by a quarter. Maybe this was due to the sheer strength difference, even if it wasn't by much, between the two. Rushing in once more, Issei swung his hammer anticipating for the monster to meet his hammer with his hand. Waiting for the perfect chance, once the monster hand made contact with his hammer, Issei let go of his hammer and ducked to avoid the huge arm in front of him, and slammed his fist straight into one of the exposed bones on the monster's legs. Howling in pain, the monster looked down to Issei, but Issei didn't stop there. Grabbing the bone and, with all his might and using the advantage of the bone already being slightly sticking out, Issei ripped the bone out of the monster's right leg. At that moment. The fight had been decided. Reducing the chances of the monster to even move properly, Issei backed away and ran to retrieve his sledgehammer. The monster dropped onto the ground while trying to get back up with its one and only leg that was functioning. While the monster was screaming in pain, Issei rushed back once more and, while the monster was still not focused, slammed the sledgehammer that he had straight into the head of the monster. The sheer force that Issei held within his swing had dented the head of the monster. Not hesitating to do it again. Upon the next hit, the head exploded. Issei had won the fight with relative ease. The headless corpse of the monster remained oozing with blood. The sledgehammer was covered in the blood of Issei victims. Quest complete. Defeat the dungeon. Rewards. Shop unlocked. Plus 25 bronze coins. Achievement unlocked. Defeat your first boss. Reward. Random equipment. After defeating the boss. Level up. A whole bunch of things just happened. First, Issei received a chest plate that dropped from the sky again. Armor. Rusty chest plate. Rarity. Common. Attributes. Plus 1 endurance. Plus 5% damage reduction. Details. A rusty chest plate that was forged by the ancients to be made by iron. Over the countless centuries, it has rusted and has become a shell of its glorious former self. Equipping the chest plate, Issei noticed that it immediately turned invisible upon contact with his body. Sighing in relief, he was happy to know that he wouldn't have to go around school wearing a bulky chest plate and saying that it was just an attire of choice. Next, he had unlocked the shop button. There was a lot of things that he had unlocked. Before he would deal with the shop button. He would first deal with leveling up. He looked at his stats and. Name. Issei Haidu. Race. Human. Idol. None. Level. 8. HP. 450 600s. MP. 250 250ths. STR. 10 plus 1. Agle. 11. End. 11 plus 1. Int. 10. Skill points. 0. Bonus. 5% damage reduction. What Issei noticed while looking at his stats is that he still didn't have any way of using his mana points into an attack or something. He knew from games that mana would lead into something useful, such as a special attack or a special useful skill. Maybe he hasn't unlocked it yet. Because of conditions. Seeing as though he had nothing else to do, Issei opened the shop icon to see a message popping up in front of him. Welcome to the shop. The shop has many exclusive items that go by rarity. The pricing of these weapons will vary. Also, coins will be the currency. Currency enhance works like this. 100 bronze coins equals 1 silver coin. 100 silver coins equals 1 gold coin. 100 gold coins equals 1 platinum coin. Enjoy the shop. 
Seeing the huge currency exchange, Issei was shocked to see how expensive a single platinum coin was. Anyways, moving past the message, Issei was finally met with the shop. On the top of the shop, there were many icons in color, gray, green, blue, purple, gold, and yellow. Seeing the initial list of weapons, Issei could tell that the colors of the icons meant the rarity of the items. Common, lucky knife. 5 bronze coins. Common, leggings of broken ages. 15 bronze coins. Common, helmet of thorns. 10 bronze coins. Common, sledgehammer. 8 bronze coins. Common, soaring boots. 7 bronze coins. Uncommon, iron chest plate. 35 bronze coins. Elf potion. 5 bronze coins. Mana potion. 3 bronze coins. The pricing was expensive. Issei only had 25 bronze coins to spend. Thinking about it, he could save and get some uncommon gear soon, but thinking about it, it would make the process of growing much quicker if he were to gear up as much as possible now. The boss of this dungeon was already pretty tough, he didn't want to get caught slacking in the next dungeons, with his level not being nearly enough for the next boss. Also, what if there was a hidden boss that was roaming around the area? Coming to a decision, Issei bought three things. For now, he didn't see the point of buying health potions just yet. The regular opponents that he was dealing with currently were much weaker than him to the point where he could finish a dungeon, excluding the boss, Hitless. Armor. Helmet of Thorns. Rarity. Common. Attributes. Plus 1 Endurance. Plus 2% Damage Reduction. Details. A helmet that was once worn by warriors in the past. They had a small dull spike on it in case if someone were to try headbutting them, but the spike. Kind of doesn't work at all. Armor. Soaring Boots. Rarity. Common. Attributes. Plus 1 Endurance. Plus 3% Damage Reduction. The tails. There once was a saying. Take a swan dive and hope you can fly. These boots were made to be light with a feather on each side. But they can't really flutter. The last item that Issei bought was another sledgehammer. He wanted to be a tank that can deal massive damage. He was ready to go on a rampage. He wanted to be built to take on an army. There was no way that he could trust anyone ever again. Equipping everything, standing proud while looking at the portal that he opened to go back to his home. He was smiling knowing that progress was being made. Name. Issei Haidu. Race. Human. Title. None. Level. 8. HP. 457 hundredths. MP. 250 250ths. STR. 10 plus 2. Agle. 11. End. 11 plus 3. Int. 10. Skill points. 0. Bonus. 10% damage reduction. Standing in his room, Issei quickly placed his sledgehammers back into his inventory. Checking the time, he noticed that it was already morning. He left during the night, came back early morning. Not something that he was expecting, but he would definitely take. His mother opened the door to see him standing there with a little bit of dust on his coat. Smiling at his mother, he noticed that she had dried up tear marks going down her face. What's wrong? Running to her son, she hugged him and began crying into his chest. Where have you been? What? She gripped him tightly, looking up at him before beginning to screech in anger while crying. Do you know how worried we were? You decided to disappear last night and we couldn't find you. She began choking on her tears before continuing. Me and your father. We thought you left because of her. We thought you left and. 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 She couldn't finish her sentence before Issei hugged her again. He didn't think this through. He thought they wouldn't check his room during the night. I'm sorry. I decided to go for a long walk. I. Didn't mean to worry you. Long walk. How long was this walk? We check your room 12 times during the night. He needed to quickly come up with something to say. I went back to the fountain. To where it all ended. With those words. His mother began crying even more. Why did this have to happen to you? Why couldn't she have been normal? I knew that she was a rotten bitch. Coming in and trying to lie to my son. Issei may or may not have mentioned that the woman decided to leave him after how much money he spent for her. Mom. She's the one missing out. I'm. I'm okay. Don't worry about me. I'm back. I will never leave you and dad. After those words, his mother simply stayed silent and continued hugging him. While this was happening. Issei's anger was beginning to rise once more. Not only did that woman already destroy him, but she began hurting his family. After a little while. Issei walked out towards his school. It had been a while since he went back to school. Ever since he had initially died, he didn't want to go back to school for a couple of days in which his parents agreed with. Walking towards the school, he noticed the shocked looks of many of his peers. Ignoring them, there was only one thing on Issei's mind. Level up. Walking past the many people that eyed him, he began hearing many rumors going around, the classical high school gossip. 
Sitting down in class. He was approached by his two friend. Yo. Issei my man. Turning to see Mitsuda and his other friend Motohama. Issei remained stoic. Yes. Where have you been man? Mitsuda nudged Issei's shoulders. Issei looked at his friend before speaking. Home. Didn't feel well. He didn't want to mention anything about the date he had been on. If anyone were to have known that he was dumped. He would become a laughing stock immediately. While they were talking, Issei began scanning his friends for their stats, to his surprise, they were around the same as him before he began leveling up. They had the number one in all their stats. That would mean he could literally rip them in half with relative ease with his strength. You sure? Or were you watching too much of the good stuff? Motohama added in. Not really. I was just very sick. Issei was really trying to divert the conversation from. Women. He didn't want to talk about women anymore. Before anything could escalate, the door to their classroom opened. Thiba walked in, all the girls in the classroom looked to see their prince charming, while Issei squinted his eyes to see Kiba heading towards him. The only thought that he could come up with is. What did the prince of the school want with him? Are you Issei? Kiba politely asked while keeping his charming smile on. Yes. This is already turning awkward. Kiba and Issei have never talked with each other before this interaction, so they had no idea how to speak with each other. Um. Well, my president wanted to speak with you. Oh. Ria's Gremory, one of the prettiest women in the entire school, wanted to speak with him. That would have been great. If she didn't have any ulterior incentives. It was obvious, Issei already been through this, no woman would want to even speak with him with the way that he acted normally. He already felt the pain of being backstabbed, now he had no idea what type of pain Ria's Gremory wanted to give him. It didn't make sense for someone of Ria's caliber to casually speak with him. Emergency quest. Survive the meeting with the devils. Reward. Level up x2. And he guessed right. Devils. After meeting with a feathered woman, he could kind of guess that Ria's may be a devil. Speaking of which, Issei decided to scan Kiba. Name. Kiba Yudo. Race. Reincarnated devil. Idol. Knight of Gremory. Level. 28. HP. 1700-1700. MP. 500-500s. STR. 26, plus 4. Agle. 33, plus 10. End. 34. Int. 25. Holy shit. Issei couldn't do damage to him. The level difference between the two was so significant that Kiba would also deal 200% more damage to him, combined with his higher strength stats. Keeping himself together, obviously beginning to sweat a little bit, Issei nodded. Oh. She wants to speak with me. Are you sure you got the right guy? Who would want to speak with me? Thiba chuckled. Don't worry, I did get the right guy. You shouldn't doubt yourself. You're not as bad as these women make you out to be. Turning around and walking along. Come on, we can talk together while reaching the occult building. Okay. Kiba didn't seem too bad of a guy. Sure. Walking along with him, escaping the room while ignoring the many glares from the girls when walking side by side with Kiba, Issei couldn't care less of those glares. While walking, Issei decided to ask. So. How is the club? Doing very well. Probably, due to Ria's and Akeno keeping the spirit up in the club room. You should see Kaneko. She definitely needs to cheer up. Having the mascot of the school, the two queens, and you. The club must be the best one here. Tuckling, Kiba shook his head. Far from it. I would easily say that the basketball club or the volleyball club are leagues better. We're just a bunch of nerds that decided to have interest in the supernatural world. Smirking and jokingly said. Rather be a nerd than a pervert. Look at all the girls swooning in over you. Thibble laughed upon hearing that. And sometimes I would rather be the opposite. Do you know how many love letters I get and have to turn down? The number of times I was screaming on the inside and wanting to tear them apart when they are in the way of my school stuff. Oh. Just thinking about them makes me slightly heat up. And only you would say that. Prince Charming. Kiba groaned while Issei laughed. Not that name. The two continued bickering while approaching the occult building. Standing in the middle of the occult middle, Issei turned to see Akeno sitting down with a smile on her face. Kiba had brought him in here before leaving, saying that he had a math exam to attend to. Does she always take a shower before speaking with the person that she brought here? Issei was annoyed. Here she was taking a shower while he was sitting down wasting precious time that he could have been using to do something different. Akeno giggled. She doesn't do this often. Especially not with guests. Just give her a couple minutes, she wanted to be at her best for her guest. Sitting down on the couch across from Issei, he could only stare at the ceiling while sighing. Closing his eyes, Issei began thinking about all that he wanted to do for the rest of the day. Before he could go further with his thoughts, Ria's Gremory finally entered the room with only a towel on. Oh Issei. I'm sorry for making you wait this long. 
Issei looked at her annoyed, ignoring her body in the process because of his annoyance. Just hurry up. Wait, why was she in a towel? Doesn't she have any respect for her body? Turning away from her, Issei began thinking. Why did she take a shower before speaking with him? Why was she only wearing a towel when she could have put on her clothes before leaving the shower room? Why was Akeno and Ria's the only people in the room besides him? Wait. Issei began frowning with anger beginning to take face. He wasn't the brightest. But there was one thing that he knew was happening. He was known as being the largest pervert in the school. Everyone knew that fact. They were taking advantage of his perversion. Rias quickly came out of the shower room again with actual clothing, the standard female uniform. Sitting down at her desk, Rias took up a serious expression. Let me cut to the chase. What are you? They say hi to, second year at this. Interrupting him sharply, Rias glared at him. You know what I mean. What are you? Tilting his head innocently, Issei knew that she was speaking about his powers. It was obvious. She was a devil so she should be able to tell more than anyone that Issei wasn't a normal human. However, Issei had a mission. Riaz. Did you get hit in the head? Excuse me? I have no idea what else you are talking about. We're all humans. Regular people. Is there something you want from me? Do you want me to speak about me being a pervert, being a disgusting specimen of the human race? Do you want me to humiliate myself further? Beginning to express his anger slightly, Issei began standing his ground. Rias lessened her glare slightly, there was something about Issei that she felt. There was no way that it wasn't supernatural. However, she didn't have any evidence to use this against him, besides a small little presence of power that she felt while passing by him earlier this morning without them noticing each other's presence. I. What powers do you have? This isn't an and I'm woman. We don't have the abilities to fly, nor do we have the abilities to shoot plasma-filled waves at our opponents. Issei paused before looking at Rias with a stern expression. I think a shower wasn't what you needed, but a couple hours of sleep and some therapy. Ignoring his remark, Rias began rubbing her temples with her hands, she leaned into her hands, which her on her desk, and sighed. Okay, maybe her approach wasn't the best. She thought that immediate pressure and taking advantage of his perversion would get him to expose his powers, but that didn't work. But. I felt this power inside of you. Rias. You sound as crazy as me having a girlfriend. You need sleep, therapy, and a couple days off from school. I have an exam in a few minutes, I'll be leaving. Getting up to walk away, Rias began calling his name to stop him, but Issei simply ignored her and left the building. It was simple, there was no evidence that she had, and that was her downfall. The moment that Issei left, Rias could only sigh in frustration. She came into the situation from a terrible angle. She really thought that maybe using her seductiveness and real pressure would make him crack, and she would be able to gain some insight on what he was. She didn't want to hurt him. She just wanted to know whether he was a threat or not to her and her peerage. Rhea still refused to believe that Issei was a regular human. There was no way that the feeling, the presence, the small hint of power that she felt in the morning time when she passed by Issei was just a fluke. Rhea began thinking. She didn't want to send one of her peerage members to continue watching Issei, that would just morally be wrong. However, she was left with no other choice. She needed to gain insight. Later tonight, she would inform one of her peerage members of a mission that she wanted them to do the next couple of days. Issei Haidu? I will find out who you truly are. Ria's eyed the shut door. Ria's. What if he truly was just a regular human? Akeno looked at Ria's with a little bit of confusion. What if the feeling you felt was just a fluke, a placebo effect? Not you too. Bigling at her frustration. Come on Ria's, maybe what you truly need is a couple hours of sleep and some therapy with me. No. Don't tell me you believe him. Ria snapped childishly. Hmm. I wouldn't really say believe. But at the same time. Seeing you right now makes me want to believe him. Come on, let's get you tucked in. Ria's groaned. I am not a child and I don't need sleep. Grabbing Ria's by the waist and carrying her above her shoulders, Akeno could only glee at seeing Ria's squirm and blush in embarrassment. Sleepy time. No. No. I don't want to. While that entire commotion was happening, Issei was standing in the middle of the grassy area in front of the occult building and behind the school. It was class time so no one was around the area. That was when he finally got the dinging sound he needed to hear. Quest complete. Survive the encounter. Reward. Level up x2. Achievement unlocked. Dancing with the devils. Details. Have an encounter with the devils and walk out without any consequences. Reward. Level up x1. Three level ups. That was nothing compared to what he needed to catch up to the devils. Kiba was the closest to him, he didn't know anything about Kaneko, but the problem with Kiba was that he was a direct counter to him. Issei was built to be a tank while Kiba was a speed demon. Name. Issei Haidu. Race. Human. Idol. 
None. Level. 11. HP. 900 900. MP. 325 325. STR. 14 plus 2. Bagel. 15. End. 15 plus 3. Int. 13. Skill points. 0. Bonus. 10% damage reduction. He didn't want to dump anything into intelligence just yet when he didn't have a purpose of using his mana points. Also, the exam he was taking. Didn't exist, he just wanted to escape school. Seeing as though he had a couple more hours before school would end, he opened his phone and messaged his mother that he would be coming home late since he would be hanging out with his friends. Perfect. This gave him the perfect opportunity to use the next level of dungeon to his advantage. Opening his menu screen, Issei clicked the dungeon icon to see the next dungeon opened. Dungeon of the Ice Kings. Difficulty. Very easy. Recommended level. 10. The Tales. Dungeon will have a large terrain filled with many enemies. The deeper you go, the more powerful the enemies will show up. Do you wish to proceed through this dungeon? Yes, no. Warning. Once you enter, leaving will be prohibited unless you defeat a single boss. Having nothing to do, Issei clicked yes and disappeared. He also made sure that no one was in the area, the open area in front of the occult building, to catch him disappearing. Landing in the terrain, Issei was met with a beautiful sight. Nestled precariously on the side of a sheer cliff, amidst a blanket of pristine snow, stands a majestic castle, its grandeur unparalleled against the backdrop of the rugged terrain. The castle, constructed from weathered stone, boasts towering spires reaching towards the heavens and sturdy walls that have withstood the test of time. Its architecture is a testament to a bygone era, where craftsmanship and artistry melded seamlessly to create enduring beauty. The surrounding landscape is a winter wonderland, with snow-capped peaks stretching as far as the eye can see. The air is crisp and clear, filled with the soft sound of wind whispering through the evergreen forests that cloak the lower slopes of the mountain. Looking upon the side in awe, Issei couldn't help but feel excited wanting to explore the castle far away from him. However, his thoughts were interrupted when he was met with a huge crystallized being. Name. Ice Golem, Mini Boss. Race. Crystal Golem. HP. 2000 2000. Level. 14. STR. 20. Agle. 5. End. 40. Buffs and debuffs have been applied. Plus 30% damage reduction from player. Plus 30% damage increase against player. The first enemy that Issei sees is a higher level golem. Not only that, but it was a mini boss. The number of hit points and the amount of damage reduction that he would have to deal with was already annoying. The agility of the monster was horrendous, but he would need to take precautions because he didn't know if he could survive a single hit against this thing. Taking out his sledgehammers, Issei watched as the thing began slowly walking towards him, shaking the ground with each step. Noticing the many disproportions of the monster, the legs being very narrow and slim compared to its upper body, Issei began formulating a plan. However, the golem quickly jumped towards Issei, aiming to crush him with his gigantic arms. Narrowly dodging the attack, Issei watched as the ground shook as ice and snow debris flowed through the air from the aftermath of the slam. Seizing his opportunity, Issei swung his hammer as hard as he could and slammed it straight into the slim legs of the monster. As he expected, he did barely anything to the monster. Swinging again while the golem began getting up slowly from its previous attack, Issei began chipping away at the thing. Backing away right as the golem fully stood up, Issei watched as the golem began slowly turning towards him. Noticing how slow the turn speed was, Issei used his immense speed and appeared right behind the golem and swung his sledgehammer simultaneously at the same spot he had been attacking. As expected, nothing happened. Backing away, he noticed that the health pool of the monster was barely decreasing. It begged the question, should Issei just run away? The chances of him messing up and getting touched versus him chipping away at the monster and eventually winning was unfair. He knew that he would mess up sooner than he would expect. No. He couldn't give up just yet. Backing away more, Issei began assessing his surroundings. Turning to see a large cave opening nearby. Issei hoped that maybe there was something that he could find there. Running towards the cave opening, ignoring the golem behind him slowly trailing after him, Issei, at immense speeds, reached the cave opening to find. Nothing. That was until he felt a small bit of water landing on him. Looking up, Issei noticed huge icicles hanging on the edge of the cave. They weren't regular icicles either, they were glowing a deep blue color. That was when Issei got an idea. Running into the cave, Issei took in his surroundings. Issei entered a realm of sheer wonder as he stepped into the cave's mouth. Light refracted off translucent crystal formations, painting the walls with a kaleidoscope of colors. The floor, a mosaic of shimmering minerals, sent ripples of light dancing beneath his feet. 
the sapphire-hued lake stretched out like a mirror, reflecting the cavern's crystals with a magical clarity. Above, crystalline stalactites adorned the ceiling, casting delicate patterns across the expanse. Every corner revealed new wonders, from frozen waterfalls to intricate sculptures. Issei felt a wash over him, treading upon sacred ground in this extraordinary sanctuary. However, seeing the many huge crystal stalactites above glowing with even larger aura than the ones in the entrance, Issei knew that this place was a death trap to anyone chaotically exploring. There were stalactites easily five times larger than him hanging on the ceiling, which was easily 30 meters in height. Slowly but assuredly, the golem began making his way towards the inside of the cave. With each footstep shaking the entire cave's inside. Smirking, this was Issei's only idea left. Standing in the middle of the cave's main area right near the sapphire lake, Issei turned around to see the golem making his way towards him. Breathing in to calm himself, Issei watched as the golem was right in front of him, before throwing his sledgehammer straight into the air. Infused, the golem looked up. Bam. Issei rushed straight into the sapphire lake to hide from the overwhelming onslaught, as all the sharp stalactites nailed straight onto the ground. Most of them landing straight onto the golem. The largest stalactite was easily the same size as the golem, landing straight onto the golem and shattering upon impact, however, the icicle wasn't a normal one. When shattering, a huge blue magical explosion occurred which led into a cluster bomb effect, as all the other icicles began exploding. The golem was in crossfire, each blow began shattering the armor that the golem had, and causing the golem to bob its body back and forth from the impact. Shatter. The continuous onslaught of stalactites had shattered the golem completely. Even Issei wasn't safe from all the pain. Some of the largest icicles had landed on him, hurting him severely, but not enough to kill him. One of the sharp icicles had pierced right through his shoulder and exploded. But nevertheless, Issei had won the battle. Getting out of the shimmering lake, Issei was bleeding, but he was able to handle the pain. He was just glad he didn't have to face the golem anymore. Fuck. That. Was. Rough. Achievement completed. Beat your first mini-boss. Reward. Level up x2. Achievement completed. Beat an enemy while being lower leveled. Reward. Random weapon, common rare. Secret quest completed. Defeat the guardian golem. The tail. Defeat the guardian golem that has been stationed to be in front of the cave of sapphire. Reward. Level up x1. Skill, obtained. Tank. The amount of rewards he got. Holy shit. But Issei was curious about this new skill. Clicking on the question mark button next to the skill, Issei got a detailed explanation of the skill. Skill name. Tank. Level 1. Details. The skill allows for someone to, using 1 MP per second, to increase their endurance and strength by 5%. Upon activating the skill, the user will be able to heal their health by 10%, once per battle. Oh. That was a nice skill to get. Anything that would boost his strength and endurance he would gladly take. Next thing he knew. Issei felt something huge bang his head, and caused him to fall down while rubbing his head. In front of him was a huge colossal size sword. Holy shit. That's huge. Weapon name. The original great sword. Rarity. Rare. Attributes. Plus 10 strength. Minus 2, agility. Requirement. 20 str. Details. Take a huge lump of steel and place it on a handle. Shape it into a sword easily 2 meters tall, and here you have the great sword. Widening his eyes, this was the jackpot. How did his luck turn this great? To get such a powerful weapon. He was very lucky to get this. Immediately equipping the sword, Issei adjusted his new stats and smirked. Name. Issei Haidu. Title. None. Level. 14. HP. 325 1050 MP. 400 400 STR. 20 plus 10. Agle. 18 minus 2. End. 18 plus 3. Int. 16. Skill points. 0. Bonus. 10% damage reduction. Skills. Tank. There was one thing that Issei noticed. When he was equipping the great sword, he couldn't equip one of his sledgehammers. Was there a problem with his stats or was it supposed to be the same weapon that can be dual wielded? Dual wielding. To dual wield a weapon, you must have 50% more stats than the requirement of your most powerful weapon. Well, that answered his question. Ignoring that, Issei gripped the handle of his great sword with both of his hands, loomed it over his shoulder and began walking around the lake. Now that he was able to explore without the threat of someone, he wondered, was there hidden treasure around? Walking around, Issei had found more enemies to fend off against. However, they were far weaker than whatever behemoth that he fought before. They were so much weaker to the point where even after killing the entire group of them in the cave, he hadn't leveled up once. While Issei began wandering down the cave, he found this interesting door. 
There were some interesting lines and symbols, he was questioning what they meant, but nevertheless, he opened the door. Over the course of his exploration, his body slowly recovering to the point where he was back at peak condition again. Issei walked into the room. Well, more like an entire hallway. Knowing that this place might have traps, Issei grabbed a decent-sized boulder with his hands by ripping it apart from the ground behind him and threw it straight through the hallway. The hallway seemed to have stretched on forever. The moment the boulder was thrown into the hallway. Nothing happened. Not a single trap was activated. Was there any traps to begin with? Running into the hallway at max speed, Issei was surprised to see that there was nothing that was being activated. Sighing in relief a little, Issei began slowing his pace down. Continuously throwing the boulder in front of him to make sure that he wasn't walking into any dangerous traps, Issei felt as if this entire hallway was safe. He still had a long ways to go before he could say that there were guaranteed no threats. However, the moment Issei made it to the middle of the room. That was when the same fog that spawns his enemies began surrounding him. The entire hallway was filled with fog. Board Apocalypse Incoming. Objective. Defeat 1000 enemies. Defeated. 0 1000. Reward. Tid Knight. Ah shit. Here we go again. Grabbing onto his sword and preparing to swing at his first opponent to show up, Issei watched as crystal-like humanoid being began showing themselves. They were large like the golem from earlier, but they were definitely larger than him by a slight margin. Name. Crystallized Brutes. Race. Crystal Humanoids. Level. 12. HP. 500 five hundreds. MP. 300 three hundreds. STR. 15. Agle. 8. End. 10. Int. 12. Here we went again. Activating tank and seeing his body grow slightly while his health and strength increased by 5%, Issei knew where their weakness was and was going to make sure that this was going to be quick. Applying buffs and debuffs. Plus 20% damage reduction from opponents. Plus 20% damage inflicted onto opponents. And he had the advantage in levels. Defeated. 1000 one thousandths. Reward. Tidnight Shard. That was definitely not as easy as Issei thought it would be. If it wasn't for his damage reduction and the level damage reduction, he would have been cooked. Not only did they have magic to enhance their bodies to take less damage, but they were able to think of plans somewhat cohesively in beating him. If it wasn't for his brute raw strength being able to one-shot each and every single enemy in the area, he wouldn't be alive right now. How many times did he level up? Only four times. From what Issei had thought is that since he was defeating the same enemy over and over again, the system registered the enemy as not being a threat which required exponentially more experience points from the same enemy to level up. Now, onto the thing that he wanted to know, what was this titanite? It was quite surprising to only see that as a reward when he had to do a very tedious task to obtain it. I wonder. Is this an upgrade material? Titanite shard. Details. A rare and powerful mineral that the very gods used to make their weapons. If sufficient amount is applied to any weapon, that weapon will become more powerful and deadlier. Holy shit. He guessed it right. Opening his menu screen, Issei saw an arrow pointing towards a new icon that had unlocked having a pickaxe and a blueprint as the picture. Clicking on it, Issei was met with his three weapons being there and his armor. Seeing his great sword covered in a blue color in the inventory box, he clicked on it immediately. Welcome to the upgrading station. Here, you will be able to upgrade all equipment depending on how many upgrade materials you have. First upgrade will be free. Upon that message being thrown away, Issei was met with another screen. Great Sword 2. Great Sword, plus 1. Attributes. Plus 10 STR 2. Plus 11 STR. Cost. 1 Titanite. Proceed with action. Yes no. Clicking on the yes button immediately, Issei was excited to know that his favorite weapon was already becoming more powerful. Now, he was going to be on the lookout for these materials. Closing his screen, Issei began walking quietly through the hallways. Once arriving at the end of the hallway, Issei busted the door open to see stairs in front of him. Walking up them, Issei entered a beautiful red room filled with pictures of the outside world. Windows scattered all around in patterns showing the outside world filled with snow. Issei was assuming that he entered the castle. There was a large dining table that was oval shaped that covered the entire middle of the room. Walking around the table, he found a door that led to the main hallway of the castle. Exploring a little bit, Issei began opening each door. To find nothing. However, that was when he noticed the end of the hallway glowing up with a sapphire blue color. Walking towards the area, Issei walked into the throne room. Sitting in the middle of the room was a king. Being similar to the others in the area with crystallized humanoid structure, the difference was that this king was as large as the golem. Sitting up, the king announced himself. Wondering mortal. What purpose do you have here in my castle? 
Staying silent for a second after hearing the chilling tone of the king, Issei responded. I'm here to roam the castle. To defeat the man in charge. Standing up to his full behemoth height, Issei came to notice that this king was wielding a sword similar in size to his. For countless years I have suffered. Will you be the one to show me my light, my guiding moonlight? Warning. Boss battle incoming. Name. Everlasting King. Race. Crystal Golem. Level. 18. HP. 2500-2500. MP. 500-500. STR. 23. Agle. 18. End. 50. And 20. They were neck on neck with each other's level. Just that the king had easily more than double his health points. It's one of those moments. Isn't it? The boss will just have way more health points than the player. Positioning himself properly, Issei noticed that this was the first enemy to have nearly matching speed with him. Without giving the king any seconds, Issei rushed straight towards the king, swinging his massive blade in hopes of colliding with the king. However, it proved null when the king simply sidestepped his attempt and backhanded Issei with the butt of his blade. Sending Issei flying back, Issei gripped his blade and used it to stop his momentum. Landing on the ground, Issei was given no time to think as the king was already in front of him. Activating tank, Issei quickly met with the king's blade and was able to deflect the king away. His raw strength was easily leagues above the king's. Shit. The king still didn't give Issei any seconds to recover as the king came reeling in with his massive sword, ready to slice him in half. Letting go of his sword, Issei ducked. Catching the king off guard with letting his weapon go, Issei slammed his fist straight into the chest of the king, sending the king spiraling straight into the majestic ceiling filled with everlasting blue aura. Shattering the ceiling above, Issei retrieved his weapon and continued being on guard. His speed and strength exceeded the king's, but his experience was nothing. The king came back down with blade in hand and crashed the blade on top of Issei's. As Issei thought he could do the same thing as before, the king twisted the blade in his favor, sliding off Issei's blade and landing on the ground in front of Issei. Before Issei could react, he felt a huge pain in his stomach. Looking down, he saw the king's blade piercing straight through his torso. Coughing out blood, Issei backed away while trying to defend himself from the upcoming onslaught from the king. Each piercing swing was aiming to disarm him, but Issei held strong. Swing after swing, Issei used his massive sword to block the blow. Trying to maintain distance, the pressure the king was applying was unfathomable. Every step he took back, two steps the king took forward. He needed an opening. There was nothing that he could do. The king was being. Too much. Closing his eyes. Issei knew that he was going to lose. He didn't know how to fight properly. Here he was thinking that he could win against a king just because his stats exceeded his opponents. Why? Why did he felt so hopeless? Why did it anger him? Opening his eyes, he looked into the soulless eyes of the king. He wasn't going to admit defeat. No. He couldn't. Would you die for me? Ah. No wonder. He felt so hopeless, and the anger was building in him. He already felt like this before. No. Never again will he feel this. Stab. The king had stabbed him again, but this time in the stomach, while Issei was deep in thought trying to defend himself. That was when Issei had enough. Using pure brute strength, when the king swung again recklessly, Issei swung his blade from side to side, parrying the king's sword and catching him off guard. I have had enough. Issei, with pure anger boiling within him, swung the blade as fast as he could, meeting with the king's blade. What neither the king nor Issei knew was that the strength difference of a couple points was already enough to pale the other opponent's strength. Shatter. Issei destroyed the king's blade with pure strength and continued trajectory. Piercing straight through the right arm of the king with his strength, Issei slammed the end of his blade straight onto the right leg of the king. Destroying the entire flooring, causing a huge quake to occur, shaking the entire castle, Issei watched as the right leg of the king shattered upon the huge blow. If he was going to win. He would force himself to win. The king backed away, but Issei appeared right in front of him. The king was able to form another sword and swing with Issei, missing Issei's blade and stabbing him again. The king was expecting for Issei to reel back in pain, but he was met with an angered roar, before Issei collided his blade right into the body of the king. Cracking the entire armor that the king was wearing, Issei watched as the king backed away more. If strength is all you want. Then I will give you strength you won't be able to handle. The king formed a massive colossal hammer that easily dwarfed Issei. However, that didn't make Issei falter one bit. Rushing straight at the king, Issei leaped straight into the air, with all his might and anger, Issei spun in the air with his great sword in hand, and, upon contacting the hammer with his great sword, Issei shattered the hammer and sliced straight through and right onto the king. The blow from Issei's attack shattered the king immediately. Breaking the flooring again and causing for the floor to collapse leading him into the floor beneath, Issei watched as he calmed down. 
Maybe pure strength is all that he needed. New skill unlocked. Lion's Claw. Level 1. The Tails. The skill allows for the user to have ultra hyper armor to pierce straight through nearly all attacks, depending on how much more strength the user has compared to the opponent. Will allow for the blow, upon contact, to deal 35% more damage. Well, he learned a new skill that suits his way of fighting. Quest completed. Defeat the Dungeon of the Kings. Reward. Choice of changing race to Iron Golem. Level up x2. The Tails. After defeating so many little, medium, and even king-size golems, you will be given the option to change to the same race, but in the iron pathway. Benefits. Every endurance point will now give 100 HP rather than 50 HP. Strength will increase by 1.5 for every level up, rather than 1 plus from now on an additional 10% passive damage reduction. Drawbacks. Every intelligence point will now give 10 MP rather than 25 MP. Agility will only grow by 0.5 each level up rather than 1 from now on. Would you proceed with this change? Yes no. Seeing the benefits, Issei knew that this was working with his current build. Clicking on yes, Issei met with his body beginning to morph. Growing, his muscles began growing more while his shirt ripped apart. His jeans that he wore began ripping from the bottom to the point where he saw his jeans turn into shorts. Standing at a staggering six and a half feet tall, Issei looked towards his new stats. Name. Issei Haidu. Race. Iron Golem. Level. 20. HP. 265 MP. 120 220s. STR. 29, plus 11. Agle. 25, minus 2. End. 26, plus 3. Int. 22. Bonus. 20% damage reduction. Skills. Tank. Issei felt. So much stronger now. He felt like a monster now. He was feeling so. Monstrous that it made him feel so good. Smirking deviously, he felt like he could take her on. How long was it? Standing in the middle of the street with his new gigantic figure, Issei could only fathom the anger his mother would probably have when seeing him. What was he going to say? Hey mom, I just went into Narnia and came back a little bit taller and much buffer. Don't mind it though, I'm still your little boy. Yeah, like that would work. Wait, Issei had a plan. Maybe he could crouch a little bit to make himself a little smaller. No. That would just make him look more awkward. There was only one thing he could do. He needed to walk into the house and immediately run straight to his room, while saying that his day went well. Before he could do anything. He felt something coming towards him. Backing up, Issei narrowly missed a light spear that was blazing straight towards his chest. Oh. Turning his head towards the source of the spear, Issei was confused to see a blue-haired curvy woman with black feathered wings in the sky. She wore a magenta-colored robe that covered her body and truly showcased her curves. I thought Rainer had killed you. Nevertheless, she could never do something right. Widening his eyes, that name was that woman's name. Name. Kalawarner. Race. Fallen Angel. Level. 18. HP. 1050-1050. MP. 750-750s. STR. 23. Agle. 24. End. 21. Int. 30. Bonus. Deals 30% extra damage to devils. She wasn't strong. Add in the debuff of her being lower level than him. This was going to be a slaughter, even if Issei wasn't a good fighter. So. You plan on killing me as well. Issei frowned. No explanation, no reasoning, all because he should have been dead. No remorse. Of course. Lowly humans like you are insignificant. You should be honored that someone of my caliber is choosing to even interact with you. Your caliber. What? Prostitution on the streets ready to be in anyone's sheets. Alwerner glared at Issei. How dare you. Like seriously. Look at what you're wearing. You're wearing some old clothing that could have been sewed by collecting things from the street, you look like an actor straight from a gangbang scene, and yet here you are in front of me saying you're a caliber above me. Why you little? And call me little when you're not even up to my chin. The fallen angel had enough and rushed straight at Issei in rage, forming a light spear in hand, she went for a vertical swipe to end Issei. What she didn't expect was for Issei to grab his great sword out from his inventory and activate Lion's Claw. Jumping straight into the air and spinning with his sword in hand, building up momentum with a swing, Issei met with the light spear faster than the fallen angel could react and slammed the swing straight into her, piercing straight through the light spear and cutting off the fallen angel's right arm and the lower half of her right leg. Issei's strength was just on a whole different level. Oh. That was. Anticlimactic. With just that blow, Issei dealt more than half of the fallen angel's health in just a single blow. So. What would you do now? 
screaming in pain and backing away upon instinct, the fallen angel looked down upon her situation, while looking back up at Issei in fear. Upon further inspecting him up close. She saw the features. The slightly shiny skin, the muscular frame, the gigantic sword. There was no way that this human was normal. Looking down at her missing arm and leg. She didn't know what to do. Luckily, Issei had missed her wings. However, there was no guarantee that she could even escape in time. Wait. Issei didn't, grabbing her by the face and slamming her pretty little face into the ground, shattering the sidewalk and causing for the area to shake from his strength, Issei wasn't going to show any mercy. Please wait. I'll tell you everything about that bitch. I will tell you everything. I know you want revenge. I know you want to kill her. Please. Hearing her please. Issei was beginning to think. Should he trust this woman? She was going to kill him. However, this was the only lead that he would potentially have on that woman. Alright. She's in the abandoned church. All her members are there. Just don't kill me please. The fallen angel began crying. Oh. They do show emotions. Issei looked down at the woman with a glare while she began whimpering and continued crying. Now. What to do with you? Grabbing his sword and raising it high into the sky, he was just going to kill her off. Please don't. I'll do anything. I'll even become your slave. Hearing the please. It angered him. If he were the one begging. This woman wouldn't even care about helping him. She was here to kill him, showing no remorse to whatever would happen to him. She was just like that woman. It angered him. Clenching his teeth and glaring at her, it disgusted her that she thought that she could get away scotch-free. You disgust me. Those words had told the fallen angel all that she needed to be told. Widening her eyes and knowing that her end was coming, she formed a light spear and threw straight at Issei, who upon watching her attack him remained unfazed. Tanking the hit, his health pool was reduced by next to nothing amount, Issei continued looking down at her. This is impossible. I never saw the day that I would die. Come so soon. Kalwerner could only drop to her knees while waiting for her death. Please. Show mercy. Holding his great sword, Issei slammed the weapon straight into the woman without any further thought. Hearing her screams die out, Issei would remove his weapon and walk away. There was no need to feel remorse for what he did. Because what he did was only justice. Achievement unlocked. Killing your first fallen angel. Reward. Level up x1. Plus 15 bronze coins. Seeing the bronze coins, Issei simply decided that he would keep some for spare. He needed to make sure that he had some to buy health potions during a brutal fight. He did not want to die without getting his revenge. Walking towards his house, Issei could only dread the fact that he was still far weaker than all the devils in the proximity. He needed to grind. He needed to fight in the dungeon for multiple days. It didn't matter how long it would take to level up, he needed to make sure his stats would be able to somewhat cancel out the level discrepancy. Making it to his house, just the sight of the old thing made Issei smile in appreciation. Walking up to the front door, Issei could hesitate. Was he really going to take this risk? He needed to walk straight towards the stairs. He didn't want his mother or father to know that he was a part of the supernatural world. He didn't want them to know that the supernatural world existed. Sighing and nodding to himself, Issei was ready to pull off his plan. Entering the house with louder thuds from his footsteps, Issei dashed towards the stairs in his house. Issei honey, is that you? His mother's angelic voice echoed through the kitchen. His father was out at his job, so he didn't need to worry about encountering his father. Yeah mom. But I don't have time to talk, I need to play some games with my friends. Using this excuse, Issei quickly ran up the stairs and made it to his room. The reason why this works was because. Issei would frequently play games with his friends during this time. Perfect excuse equals the perfect result. His mother's voice echoed through the house. Okay honey. Remember, tomorrow you don't have any school. I don't want the same incident to happen like the last few times when you thought there was school on the weekends. Okay mom. He screamed from his room. The weekend was coming near. He just needed time to grind out the dungeon. How long did it take? Issei was standing on top of a large corpse of an ice golem. He had taken down how many mobs? He lost count after the 100th. Staying in this area for the past 10 hours, Issei was only getting bored at one-shotting these golems. He had been here alone. Obtaining random rewards from the drops after killing these mobs, such as bronze coins, and he only obtained one titanite shard from killing all these monsters. Would he call this grinding session a success? After killing so many enemies, the system had registered everything in the area as being a joke. He had only leveled up four times after killing so many critters for 10 hours. Leaving dungeon. Total time within dungeon. 10 hours 23 minutes. Loot obtained. One titanite shard. Plus 103, bronze coins. One silver coin and three bronze coins. Sitting down on his bed, Issei had finally arrived after obtaining all his loot. Now. 
Issei had a mission today. He was going to kill that bitch. No matter what it took. Standing back up, Issei knew that his father left for work again. Leaving his mother to be the one in the house. But he knew at this time, she would usually take a long nap from all the work she would put in for his father and himself. Walking out of the house, Issei would begin his approach to the abandoned church. Nothing was going to stop him. Upon arriving at the abandoned church. Issei was met with the door already being opened. Walking into the church, Issei noticed a presence. Name. Freed. Race. Human. Level. 23. HP. 959 150ths. MP. 600 600 STR. 23 plus 2. Agle. 26 plus 2. And. 19. Int. 24. His speed was superior to his says. That would pose a problem. Would you look at that? Someone decided that today would be their last day. Freed spoke while having his tongue out while holding his guns in his hands. I wonder. How many bullets? Issei jumped straight towards Freed. Leaping into the air while the crazed man continued speaking, Issei reeled his great sword back and slammed it straight into the ground. Freed was able to narrowly dodge the attack, but the sheer strength of Issei's blow caused so much collateral damage that the entire building collapsed. The entire building landed on top of the two, burying the two in rubble. Freed coughed through the smoke while getting himself free from the rubble. He looked straight at the place where Issei stood, gritting his teeth while pointing his gun straight at Issei. You really just pissed me off. Clenching his sword, Issei knew that he couldn't move as fast as Freed, while carrying his great sword with him. Throwing his sword at Freed as fast as possible, his sword pierced straight through the air zooming right through Freed. Cutting his arm straight off while landing on the ground behind Freed, Issei stayed silent throughout the entire encounter. What the fuck? Issei didn't show any hesitation, rushing straight at Freed while he was holding on to his. Well, what used to be his arm. Grabbing his head and ripping it straight off Freed's body. Issei could only see her head. Anyone that affiliated with Rainer would see the worst in him. With him destroying the entire building and the floor that they used to stand on, Issei noticed that there was a secret pathway that led downstairs. Walking towards the stairs. Issei felt an odd chilling feeling coming from the ground below. Walking straight downstairs after retrieving his weapon, Issei looked down to see blood. Seeping downstairs. Upon making it downstairs, Issei was met with a room filled with fallen angels. Not a single one looked like Rainer. But there was one more thing that Issei noticed. In the middle of the room. There was a corpse. The corpse seemed to be fresh. With her blonde hair, with her soulless eyes, with her withering clothing, but nothing prepared Issei for what he saw on the girl's face. The pure frightened expression, the pure anguish, the pure pain that he could feel from the corpse. He could see the dried tear marks going down her face. Would you look at that? Another human wants to play. One of the fallen angels spoke, causing for the others, probably a dozen of them, to begin laughing as well. Issei ignored them. The haunting sight. He would never forget this, but the worst thing about this was. She wasn't coming back. Issei clenched his teeth. His anger was beginning to take control. He didn't even know the woman. He shouldn't care. Yet, the anger wasn't coming from the death of the woman mostly. It was coming from the fact that he was too late to save someone from suffering the same fate as him. In actuality, this woman probably suffered far worse than him. Gritting his teeth. I don't know why Rainer had us stay here to clean this mess while she left to showcase her new equipment to Lord Azazel. His anger exploded upon hearing that. That woman killed another person. That woman. No, that monster is still on the loose doing this to innocent people. His anger was beginning to reach new levels. The same white glow was beginning to calm him down, but the increasing anger he felt was cancelling out the effects of the glow. All hell was going to break loose. His great sword began glowing. His body began moving on its own. Walking towards the group of fallen angels, Issei was left with only one thought. Fill all those in the area. Emergency quest. Defeat all fallen angels in the area. Reward. Level up x4. Ignoring the message, Issei's sword began glowing a bright bluish white color. The fallen angels slowly began moving their way towards Issei. Hey. How about one of us just go and end him? One of the fallen angels spoke. One of them did dive straight towards Issei, but as the fallen angel came into contact with Issei, they exploded. Issei had sliced the fallen angel in half and killed them in a single second. Another fallen angel rushed towards him, they met the same fate. Walking at a constant rate, Issei could only keep his emotionless gaze on the corpse of the girl. She didn't deserve this. He didn't deserve what happened to him. They didn't deserve this. In a scream of anger, Issei reeled back his sword. With the sword now glowing a bright light, the fallen angels formed their light spears to try and defeat Issei in one move. However, what they didn't notice was just the sheer magnitude of power Issei held within his sword. Boom. 
a single explosion was all that could be described. It was as if a minuscule star had imploded in the middle of the basement. Blasting all nearby objects, melting the very flesh of the fallen angels that dared to be with him. Issei watched through his own explosion of the many screams, the terror that he caused, the genocide that he created with one move. The entire ceiling collapsed onto him once more. Nothing was left. Not even the corpse of the girl. Issei could only sit down in the middle of the room. He had killed all the dozen of fallen angels in the area. With his burnt arms from his own explosion. Issei could only watch as the fire that he created with his explosion continued burning. Flowing into the sky. I will. Get you. The only words he needed to say. New skill unlocked. Energy wave. The tails. Creates a wave of pure energetic chaos from the tip of your blade. The longer you charge, the more destructive it becomes until it reaches a maximum. Every second charge costs 20 MP, 100 MP max, damage resulted for every second charge goes up 15%, capacity is at 75%. Emergency quest completed. Defeat all fallen angels in the area. Reward. Level up x4. Issei looked straight up into the sky and sighed. He was going to relax for the rest of the day. Name. Issei Haidu. Race. Iron Golem. Level. 29. HP. 4500 4500. MP. 0310. STR. 42.5, plus 11. Agle 31.5, minus 2. End. 42, plus 3. Int. 31. Bonus. 20%, damage reduction. Skills. Tank. Lion's Claw. Energy Wave. He was already becoming quite powerful. His biggest attributes were his strength and his health. His agility was already becoming far too weak compared to his other stats. He would need to focus on it. In terms of stats. He matched someone who was, without equipment, 5 to 10 levels higher than him. That made him more secure with fighting against some of the devils. If they messed with him. Riaz could only stare at the devastation that lay in front of her. Only thing that remained in her mind was. Who could have done this? There was a single thought. There was no doubt that it was Issei. He was the only suspect that she knew that might have done this. Riaz. Who do you think could have done this? Akena looked to her king. It wasn't that hard to tell that her peerage were concerned with the destruction that occurred. Akeno. I want you to tell Kaneko that I have a mission for her. Alright, Riaz. But still. You didn't answer my question. Akeno. I will handle this. Riaz didn't want to tell Akeno because the last time she brought up Issei, Akeno kept forcing her to sleep and trying to calm her down. She didn't believe that Issei would be the culprit. Akeno sighed before nodding while walking off. As you wish Riaz. Riaz continued looking across the ruins, the flames that covered the area, and the rubble from the collapsed building, it was inevitable that the humans would be curious about what happened here. Now it was fine for some random bullshit rumors to spread throughout the town. Where was Issei when he finished his massacre? He was sitting down on his bed going over his shop menu. He had one silver coin and 18 bronze coins. He wondered what he could get with all that. Uncommon, Sword of Thorns. 55 bronze coins. Uncommon, Leggings of Dishonesty. 45 bronze coins. Rare, Shield of Judgment. 1 silver coin. Rare, Great Sword. 1 silver coin and 25 bronze coins. Epic, Ruins Great Sword. 5 silver coin. Rare, Gold Chest Plate. 1 silver and 5 bronze coins. Epic, Great Shield. 5 silver coins and 25 bronze coins. Health Potion. 5 bronze coins. Mana Potion. 3 bronze coins. Larger Health Potion. 15 bronze coins. Mana Potion. 10 bronze coins. These were the things that interested him. Issei could save up to buy another great sword, but the shield really got his attention. In games, shields were great for tanks. Issei really wanted to get the shield and place it onto his offhand. Curiosity got the best of him, and Issei bought the shield. It magically appeared in front of him. Shield name. Shield of Judgment. Rarity. Rare. Attributes. Plus 5 endurance. Plus 10% damage reduction. Minus 2, agility. Requirement. 15 str. Details. Once was the holy shield of the many people in the past. The relic is now just lost treasure. One of the best shields for foot soldiers during the Great War for the simple use it had. Tank attacks. Issei felt. Very powerful wearing the shield. It made him. Feel. Very complete with the shield, large sword, huge health pool, and a huge amount of strength. It made him feel like an actual tank. Combine that with his massive size, and he felt like he could take on Riaz. Standing up, Issei realized that someone would be curious about the entire mess he created today, but he wouldn't deal with it just now. Turning to see the window, Issei widened his eyes upon seeing a familiar figure. 
Rhea's Gremory was approaching his home. Why was she here? Was she watching the entire massacre occur to know that it was him? However, those thoughts quickly changed when Issei realized that when Rhea's would knock on the door. His mother would be the person opening the door. It would become inevitable that his mother would know of his height and the new changes to his body. Opening the window, Issei quickly jumped out of the window and landed in front of Rhea's. Seeing the new Issei. Rhea's widened her eyes and gasped. She was not expecting Issei to just jump out big of the window and greet her like this. What do you want? I was right. You weren't normal. You've changed in such a short time. What are you? It was inevitable. His physical change was in no way human. Everyone would know that. Since this woman was a part of the supernatural world, Issei could already tell that he couldn't lie out of this one. The bigger question is. What do you want from me? Issei took the chance to finally check her stats. He didn't have time before when they first met because of his anger towards her for using his perversion. However, he was confident that he would somewhat be able to hurt her if they fought. Name. Rhea's Gremory. Race. Pure Devil. Idol. Heir to the House of Gremory. Level. 36. HP. 1600-1600. MP. 3400-3400. STR. 40. Agle. 34. End. 32. Int. 48, plus 20. Bonus. Plus 30% magic damage. She was 4 levels higher than his current level. Seeing his stats compared to hers. Issei could guess that she was more magic compared to anything else that she had. Not only that, but he could also guess that being devil increases mana gains, since her level times the normal amount only amounted to half of her current mana numbers. You did it. You did it. Didn't you? Issei knew that this woman was referring to the abandoned church's destruction. Yeah. Why? Fallen angels. That was all that was needed to be said. Rhea's widened her eyes in disbelief. There were fallen angels hiding in the most obvious place yet here she was trying to figure out where they hid. Rhea's couldn't decide what to say. She wanted to assess Issei as whether he was an ally or an enemy. Hearing that he killed the fallen angels gave her hope, but seeing THR destruction from the aftermath made her doubt her hope. The fallen angels. Why did you kill them? Issei immediately responded. They tried killing me, I simply gave them equal treatment. Rias, once again, was stunned. Issei not only survived an encounter with fallen angels, but he killed them without looking. Hurt much, besides the slightly burnt arms. Are you? A threat to this town, to me, to my own people. That was when a message popped up. Major choice incoming. This decision will dictate your future. Choice 1. Say you're an ally and this will prevent an unnecessary fight between you and her peerage. It will also prevent a certain race from becoming your enemy. Choice 2. You can say you're an enemy and fight a peerage. This will bring a bunch of pain in the future, as the devils are a huge component to the world. He didn't know much about Rias. But there was one thing for sure, she was easily a threat to him if she wanted to be and combine that with her peerage, she would easily kill him off. Not only that, he didn't want to make unnecessary enemies, and making enemies with an entire race was. Not the brightest idea. Issei looked at Rias and answered. I will not hurt you if you don't hurt me. Simple as that. I'll treat you depending on how you treat me. The choice had been made. Rias softened her glare and smiled. You don't know how happy that makes me. I did not want to hurt you. Issei. Ignoring her comment, Issei turned around. Shit. How do I get into the house without my mom noticing? Upon hearing that, Rias laughed while placing her hands on her mouth to try and calm herself down. Have you been trying to hide your physical changes from your parents? Turning around. Issei slowly nodded. You do know. I can help with that. I can make their memories slightly altered so that they can accept their son as this huge behemoth walking around. Hearing that, Issei simply scoffed. What makes me think I would trust you with anything related to my parents? Crossing her chest and looking at him seriously. If I do anything weird or bad to them. I will, upon my name as the future leader of the household of Grimory, let you cut me in half without any hesitation. Staring at her straight in the eyes, Issei could tell that she was serious. She was still staring at him with her utmost serious expression. Putting her life on the line if she failed to comply with her promise. That was something. Issei kind of wanted this to happen. He wanted to see his mother. He wanted to hug his mother and see his father. Fine. But. I promise. Nothing bad will happen. Nodding and letting her walk into his house. Issei was going to definitely have issues with this troublesome woman. Before anyone jumps the gun, I really don't understand where the hate for Rias comes from. In the light novel, she's a great character. Somehow, people on this site turned her into this evil demonic being of greed. I don't get it. But that being said, I will be writing Rias in my own way. She will be a very good friend with Issei. 
Issei was happy sitting down with his mother watching a movie that she wanted to watch. Riaz did keep her end of the deal with allowing his mother to believe that her son was always this behemoth. His father would come home soon, and he was excited to see his father after avoiding his parents for a couple of days. Seeing as though he was at the borderline of eclipsing Riaz and knowing that she was the most powerful out of her peerage, Issei would feel more secure knowing eventually Riaz and her peerage would be left in the dust when compared to his power. Issei. Did you see that scary monster? The problem with having the system was that he couldn't watch a movie, because whenever he would feel an emotion too powerful, the system would immediately calm him down. Turns out, his mother couldn't see the bright white aura that surrounded him. Was it a supernatural only thing? Or him exclusively that could see the white aura? Mom? It wasn't that scary. His mother clung onto him while screaming multiple times when the killer was revealed. She was a child at heart, especially when it came down to movies. He simply chuckled seeing her scared shitless. However, this moment was short-lived. New quest. Go to the abandoned building where you can feel the presence of Rhea's Gremory. Reward. Level up. Plus reputation points with Rhea's Gremory. Mom? I need to deal with something. Issei saw the rewards. Leveling up, hell yeah. His mother pouted. You never want to spend time with your mother. You always say that you have something to do. I would love to spend time with you. But I really have to finish this little thing, but I promise I will be back in two hours. Pouting, his mother still ignored him. Issei simply sighed and walked away. And I will bring a surprise for you and dad once I'm back. Fine. Just don't get hurt. Issei smiled at his mother. To ease her worries, Issei boasted. Do you really think anyone would be able to hurt this behemoth? He was bluffing for sure, but he didn't want his mother to be worried sick. Seeing her cry once already hurt him. He never wanted to see his mother cry. He hoped he would never see his father cry either. Sensing the magical presence of Rias from further away. Turns out, he learned how to do this by sensing huge mana presences in the proximity, with that he was able to deduct how to sense people who had excessive mana. Rias was just a walking landmine of mana. So, finding her was pretty easy for him. Appearing right at the building where Rias and her peerage entered, Issei walked in to see them standing in front of a large demon-like creature. There was a woman's body sticking out of the middle of a large, mutated body, with six large beast-like legs covered in fur standing in the middle of the room. Issei? What are you doing here? Riaz was shocked to see Issei. I should be asking you that. Oh. Another unfortunate prey. The beast-like woman spoke while staring at him with a predatory gaze. Another abomination. Issei spoke while walking towards Riaz. You about to deal with it or will I finish it? Name. Visor. Race. Stray devil. Level. 26. HP. 2120-100. MP. 250-250. STR. 33, plus 5. Agle. 18. End. 42. Int. 10. The strength that the stray devil had was something to be noted of. The level of the stray devil kind of made the devil kind of useless against Issei. Actually. I think this is the perfect time to show you the power of my peerage. Rhea smiled in pride before signaling towards Kiba to begin. Kiba rushed straight towards the stray with his sword in hand. Rushing in and swinging his blade, Issei watched as the stray swung her hand in hopes of swiping a Kiba, but the sheer speed difference was too much causing for Kiba to easily peer straight through the stray, appearing right behind her and slicing off a leg before backing away. Kiba is my knight in my peerage. His specialty is. Speed. Issei blurted out while interrupting her. Rias turned towards Issei and watched as Issei's eyes were glued onto Kiba. He's quite fast. You guessed it right. Well, there is still Kaneko. Strength. Yes. There. The Kendo is more well-rounded compared to the two, but she heavily relies on her magic. Rias pouted before huffing. Stop being right. It takes away the joy of surprising you. Laughing at her pout, Issei noticed that the beast tried one last move against Rias. Squirting acid from the beasts. Body Issei simply walked in front of Rias and let the acid cover him. Not a single bit of damage to him, but Rias still gasped. Issei. Issei remained emotionless. This is not the shower I was expecting to take today. Unfazed by the acid, Issei began walking towards the beast. Rias watched as Issei was unharmed. Simply walking straight towards the beast, Issei looked like an anime character in her eyes. I'll deal with the monster. Grabbing his sword, Issei continued walking straight through the acidic attempts from the beast. What are you? The beast woman began panicking, seeing as her attacks were doing nothing to Issei. Instead of answering her, Issei slammed his sword right into the woman. Piercing straight through the beast woman, cutting her in half. Issei simply looked at her horrified expression on her face. Another one bites the dust. Riaz looked at the pure raw power Issei showed with his sword. 
one swing of his blade was all that was needed. Not only that, but Issei also shook the building with his sheer power alone. Issei. That was so cool. Ria's looked as if she was looking at some celebrity. Rushing straight towards Issei and jumping up and down in excitement. You were like Haya. And the monster was like. Blah. Issei could only look towards the others in confusion. Akeno, Kiba, and Kaneko could only chuckle in confusion. They didn't expect their king to act like a child suddenly. Chuckling and patting Ria's on the head, Issei suddenly got a message. Quest completed. Go to the abandoned building where you can feel the presence of Ria's Gremory. Reward. Level up. Plus reputation points with Ria's Gremory. Reputation points. How does that work? Reputation points work as a way of showing how much someone thinks of you. Having a higher reputation leads into more interactions, more bonuses, more rewards, and more opportunities. Currently from the supernatural world of people you know, this is what they think of you. Ria's. Admires you. Akeno and Kiba. Think positively of you. Kaneko. Fucking hates you. Sona. Neutral. Well. He just met with Ria's, and she was already admiring him. Kaneko disliking him probably came from his reputation at school. He was surprised that Akeno and Ria's didn't dislike him because of his reputation. Emergency warning. Hidden boss incoming. Widening his eyes upon seeing the message, Issei grabbed Ria's and yanked her straight towards him, before summoning his shield and barely blocking a powerful fist coming straight towards him. Standing in front of him was a colossal figure shrouded in darkness, the creature's obsidian armor adorned with sinuous patterns that evoke primal malevolence. With eyes ablaze with infernal fire peering from beneath a grotesque helm, it wields a massive wickedly serrated blade forged in the depths of the abyss. Accompanied by an aura of dread and suffocating malevolence, Issei looked at the knight. Name. Demonic Knight of the Abyss. Race. Abyss. Level. 32. HP. 2750 2750. MP. 550 550th. STR. 38 plus 10. Agle. 33 plus 4. End. 45 plus 10. Int. 22. Bonus. 40% damage reduction. This wasn't good. Issei was weaker in agility by a good amount, while his level was lower by 2. He was dealing with a monster with 60% damage reduction against him. Ria's looked at the knight with a little worry. However, she didn't feel as if the monster would pose much of a problem. Before the monster began shining a bright red color and exploded in a fury of reddish aura that began melting the ground around. Boss had entered enraged state. Enraged state. 15% to all stats. Looking at the monster. Issei felt something he didn't expect to feel in such a long time. He began to worry. Rushing straight towards the knight, Issei watched as the knight moved faster than him, swinging its blade straight at him, Issei met the blade with his shield. Parrying the blow, Issei was able to swing his sword, missing the knight. However, right behind the knight, Kiba came in and was able to land a quick swing. However, due to the level discrepancy and the boosted stats, Kiba was barely able to damage the knight through the 80% damage reduction it had over him. Issei watched as the knight faced Kiba, taking his chance and activating tank, and using Lion's Claw. Issei spun in the air, but the knight had already noticed him. Issei was met with a powerful stab, but. He tanked straight through a thanks to the Hyper Amor of Lion's Claw, and landed a devastating blow. If it were any other enemy, he would have done a good portion of the monster's health. However, the knight was built different. The knight didn't flinch and grabbed Issei by the throat and slammed him hard into the ground. Coughing up blood from the sheer force of the impact, Issei swung his hand in hopes of hitting the knight. Making contact with the knight, Issei watched as the knight remained unfazed. Taking its hand, Issei felt the knight land a powerful punch to his face. While the knight was focusing on Issei, Ria's threw an energetic ball of destruction at the knight. Ria's, being of a higher level, could deal 40% more damage to the knight. Making contact with the knight, Issei watched as the knight was blown away. Issei, are you okay? Issei looked at Ria's. Not the time Ria's. Issei rushed at the knight once more, but the knight used its superior speed to maneuver its way behind Issei and swing its blade to land another blow straight onto Issei. Tanking the blow, Issei felt a good portion of his health being drained from that, but Issei watched as the knight didn't stop. Grabbing Issei and throwing him into the air, the knight empowered its blade and swung again, Issei tried to block the blow, but he was too slow. The knight landed consecutive blows. 1. 2. 3. 4. 5. 7. 10. 20. It was relentless. Each blow cutting into Issei's skin while he could only grit his teeth from the sheer pain. Nothing had prepared him for this. Monster. The knight continued. Stabbing Issei straight through the stomach. Issei was left helpless. Ria's and Akeno kept shooting magic, but the knight ignored their attacks in hopes of destroying Issei. 
When the knight prepared a powerful charged attack, that was when Issei moved his sword in hopes of blocking. He was able to block, but the sheer power behind the blow still had damaged him. Landing on the ground, skidding across and finally coming to a stop. Issei was glad that he chose being a golem. He would have definitely been killed from all that punishment. Offing up blood while looking down at his bleeding chest, Issei could only grit his teeth before thinking. Activating tank again and empowering his blade with energy, Issei had a plan. Slamming his foot and shattering the ground, leaving the knight in the air. Rushing towards the knight, Issei watched as the knight empowered its blade. They both swung their blades, colliding in the middle. Issei would have been stronger if it weren't for the boost that the knight had on. They were about even in strength. Neither would budge. However, that was when Issei felt the knight beginning to overtake his strength. Not letting that happen, Issei began charging his blade. The knight began doing the same. Bria's watched as the collision between the two began heating up the area. Kaneko was in no condition to even come remotely close to the two. She was easily the largest liability in the area. Ria's and Akeno were waiting for the perfect time to launch their magic at the night. If they attacked right now, Issei would most definitely be in the crossfire. Issei and the knight continued in this struggle. Right when Issei noticed the knight try to dodge his blade by attempting to glide off his blade with its own, Issei activated Lion's Claw to throw the knight off. The knight wasn't the brightest. Issei took advantage of that. Slamming his empowered blade right into the knight and watching as not only his blade caused an explosion, but the knight's blade also caused an explosion. Creating a nuclear explosion within the building, Ria's, Akeno, Kaneko, and Kiba were sent flying straight out of the building, while the entire building collapsed onto the two. When the smoke cleared, Ria screamed in horror. Standing in the middle of the debris was Issei with the knight underneath him. The knight had cracks all around its armor, while Issei had a sword piercing straight through his stomach. The explosion from the knight's sword absolutely shredded Issei's health. You? Smart. Bastard. Issei struggled saying before the knight's sword blasted him straight through the debris and into the ground further away. The knight wasn't going to go down easily. While Issei had slammed his sword into the knight, the knight wasn't as affected as Issei thought and was able to stab Issei straight through his stomach. Both the knight and Issei were heavily wounded, Issei being the one closer to death. The knight was able to mitigate more damage with its higher damage reduction. The knight began approaching Issei with its feet dragging across the ground ready to finish the fight. Issei could only cough out more blood through his mouth. However, Ria's and Akeno shot magic bolts with their respective magic affinities. The knight was able to be prepared and used its sword to deflect the magic. Ria's rushed in, shooting more magical spheres of destructions, hoping to damage the knight more, but the knight blasted straight towards her. Grabbing her by the head and brutally kneeing her face, shattering her nose from the impact and throwing her across the ground, Ria's was nearly down for the count. Kiba rushed in, attempting to swing while the knight had its back turned against him, the knight simply backhanded him away. Akeno was charging some powerful magic, but she was left open. The knight knew that if he approached Akeno, the white-haired girl would intervene. Using its pure raw strength and speed, it chucked its sword and pierced straight though Akeno's right arm. It missed the heart, but it was enough for Akeno to scream and fall to the ground clutching where her arm used to be. This only left Kaneko to be the last one standing. Kaneko watched as one by one, her comrades fell to this monster. She began trembling. She was never this close to facing death. The knight appeared right in front of her, towering over her miniature frame. Before she could react, the knight grabbed her head and began squeezing her head. Screams were all that could be heard from all around. Ria's, opening her eyes, upon hearing the scream shot straight up. She was heavily disorientated from the brutal knee blow. However, she needed to save her family. Looking at Kiba, who was still recovering from the brutal backhand he received, and Akeno, who was bleeding at a brutal rate and had already passed out from the pain, Ria's began crying. She had never been this close to death. She had never seen her peerage members be beaten to this degree. Forming a very powerful attack. She hoped to catch the attention of the knight. The knight, upon seeing the reddish color behind him, turned to see Ria's powering up her attack. Let go of her you fucking monster. The knight released Kaneko, not before kicking her in the face. A sickening crunch could be heard as Kaneko dropped limp onto the ground with her nose shattered, her skull nearly shattered, and her neck partially broken. The knight began walking towards Ria's. Closing her eyes, Ria's released her strongest attack that she could within the few seconds she had to charge her attack. And watched as the knight had been ready to block the attack. Even so, the sheer power behind her attack was able to shatter the knight's blade. With that, Ria's closed her eyes and had accepted her fate. I'm sorry. Mom. Dad. Brother. Kiba. Akeno. Kaneko. Anisei. Only if I was stronger would we have survived. I'm such a disappointment. Tears were the only thing that were going down her face. Please. Someone. Save us. Brother. Save us. 
She opened her eyes to see the knight readying to end her. That was when Issei appeared with his entire blade coated in pure white energy. Blood still trickling his face as he screamed before slamming his sword straight into the knight. Issei landed his blow straight into the area where he originally cracked the knight's armor. The sheer power behind his blow was going to be devastating. The knight tried to use his blade. But there was a problem. The knight didn't have a blade thanks to Rias. Issei blow, upon impact, was so powerful that it immediately shattered the armor of the knight. Standing in the smoke of his explosion, the knight was nowhere to be seen, but an exhausted Issei was seen with his blade in the ground. I am so glad that I had 18 bronze coins. I used all of them. Note to self. Make sure to have bronze coins in disposal at any time. Hidden quest completed. Defeat the demonic knight. Reward. Level up x5. Plus 25 bronze coins. Plus 1, titanite shard. Hidden quest completed. Save Rias and her peerage. Reward. Plus plus reputation with them. Plus new equipment. Well. At least he was able to save a couple of people from death. I guess he could call that a win. Rias only looked at Issei before she began bawling out into his chest. Hugging him while continuing her crying. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She continued saying that while Issei began adjusting his stats. I wonder. The knight definitely had stats that surpassed Rias. Even though it was four levels lower. So, stats have their role while levels also have their roles. Interesting. That was when he felt new equipment on top of his head. Really. On top of my head. Armor. Plate of the Abyss. Rarity. Rare. Attributes. Plus 5 endurance. Plus 20% damage reduction. Details. Armor that was once worn by the soldiers of the Abyss. They fought in the deepest pits of Tartarus and lost their sanities from the sheer time they remained. The armor is now once a shell of its former self. Now Issei was reaching points where his damage reduction was beginning to become so powerful that even against monsters that outclassed him, he would be able to hang on for a while. He was the perfect tank in every way. His speed was slow, but to make up for that, his strength was earth-shattering in comparison. His health was immense to the point where he could take attacks from beings with far greater strength and speed, such as the knight he fought before. Name. Issei Haidu. Race. Iron Golem. Level. 35. HP. 1306,000. MP. 0370. STR. 51.5, plus 10. Agle 42, minus 4. End. 48, plus 12. Int. 37. Bonus. 45%, damage reduction. Skills. Tank. Lion's Claw. Energy Wave. Well. Now, where was he with reputation? Rias. You're her hero and savior. She admires you and wants to become like you. You're her guiding moonlight. Akeno. She admires you and views you as her hero. Kiba. He admires you and views you as his hero. Kaneko. She is slightly intimidated by you, but her view of you has changed. She thinks of you as someone that she could trust for saving her. Sona. Neutral. Hmm. So, they think of him as a hero. Well. Is that a good thing in the long run? Rias was still clinging onto him. Nuzzling into him while still crying. Oh shit. I still need to get something for mom. Brother, he was like this. And then, he was like that. It was so cool. Then, he even hugged me and told me that everything was going to be alright. Rias exclaimed while calling her brother. Serzichas looked at his sister with relief. Upon seeing his sister through the communication circle, he was panicking seeing the bruises, the cuts, the bloody face. He was instantly going to rush towards her without any regard for anything around her. He was going to kill whoever would hurt one of his family members. However, Rhea smiled and began calming her brother down. Now, here she was telling how her hero had saved her. She began telling her brother how cool Issei was when saving her. Where was Issei? Well, Issei had brought Rias to her clubhouse. Most of her members were in critical states, while Rias herself was absolutely destroyed physically and mentally from the night. Where is this hero of yours? Serzichas wanted to thank the man that saved his little adorable sister. Issei didn't really have anything else to do. He needed to recover before he could go on another mission. So, when he dropped Rias and her peerage of at the clubhouse, he quickly left leaving her to call her brother. Rias sighed a little before looking at her brother. He disappeared. He said he had something to do with his family. I really wanted to give him something. Anything really, like money, jewelry, or even weapons. He went through all that trouble. All that pain just to save me and my peerage when he didn't even need to be there. Serzichas sighed in disappointment, maybe this man could have been the person that could save his little sister from a certain blonde-haired man. Well, I'll be coming with Grafia with some phoenix tears to heal you all. Closing the communication circle, Serzichas was left with his wife right next to him. I feel so. 
relieved seeing her safe. Brafia chuckled. You really care for her. A little too much at times. Serzichas pouted towards his wife. I'm only giving her what I didn't have during the Devil Civil War. Serzichas wanted to make sure that his sister would be able to have the best time that she could without any conflicting wars occurring. What he couldn't get was the things that he would give his sister. Who knows? Maybe if another war happens, Rias might be able to find her true love. Grafia jokingly said while holding on to Milikas, who was trying to sleep in his mother's hold. Serzichas shook his head, causing Grafia to laugh even harder. Gently grabbing his son from his wife's hold, Serzichas could only lovingly stare at his son. I'm just glad that she has someone else besides me to rely on now. I hope that she would find another person to view as a hero. Because I won't be there all the time to help her. Grafia remained quiet before placing her hands on her husband's shoulders. He truly is like you. Milikas is just a baby version of you. Father like son. Yet the father still acts like an immature child most of the time. Serzicha scrunched his face and pouted. Grafia is a meanie. Grafia could only sigh. This was her husband. No. Grafia is always right. Issei was sitting down on the couch next to his mother and father. They finished the first movie and went along to watch the sequel to the first movie. The number of times his father had screamed in fear while his mother did the same. It was ridiculous. Instead of watching the movie, Issei began thinking about things. That night was. Built like me. Its stats were leagues above other creatures around its level. The fight with the knight had brought Issei to being far more cautious about exploring the world. It was thanks to Rias and her peerage that he was able to defeat it. If Rias hadn't incinerated the sword, he wouldn't be here sitting with his family. Quest unlocked. Quest. Speak with Sona and Rias with their peerage. The tales. With your friendship with Rias being so strong, you have been invited to a meeting between the two rulers of the lands. Reward. New title. So. This was his reward with becoming friends with Rias. That's why it said the quest was unlocked rather than just stating the quest. Issei was also curious with the new title that he could get. However, Issei was wondering. Why was he getting this quest when Rias nor Sona wasn't around? Also, how was he going to be invited? That was when he heard a knock. God damn it. Getting up, Issei knew that it was going to be Rias. She was the only person in the town within the supernatural world that knew where he lived. Opening the door, Issei was met with Rias, fully bandaged up and smiling. Issei. After hearing a low-pitched scream coming from a girl, Issei's mother jumped up from the couch and rushed towards the door. Staring at the person at the door, she narrowed her eyes and glared at the woman. She wasn't going to let her son go out with any other harlot without her, knowing that she could trust them. It didn't matter how beautiful they were or how rich they were. Her son's life was far more important. Issei. Who is this woman? Oh. She's a. Friend of mine. Rias waved her hand gently at his mother. You must be his mother. Mickey still had a stern expression. Playing nice wasn't going to work. That was when Rias grabbed her hand and shook it. I didn't want to say this. But your son. Your son saved my life. Your son is an amazing person. Your son is my hero. My admiration. Mickey upon hearing this was confused. What was this woman talking about? Her son being a hero. She wasn't informed from her son of anything heroic that he had done. Turning her head to say, she was met with a shrug. Um. What are you talking about? I haven't been informed of anything. Heroic my son has done. You don't know. Your son saved me from couple of robbers. Looking at the woman more clearly, Mickey did notice many bandages wrapped around her body that were covered in blood. He came in and did this. Hiya. After that, he gave them a little bit of this. Hiya. Mickey finally connected the pieces. Her son coming in with a little bit of blood on the remainder of his shirt, the shirt that he tried to rip apart but failed to rip off a small portion that got stuck on his pants. It must have come from saving this woman. My son. Is a hero. Your son isn't just a hero. He is the best hero. Rhea screamed excitedly. Mickey could only smile and warmth from hearing her son accomplishing something so amazing. Her son. The perverted beast. Being the brave hero to save someone. Never did she expect to see this happen. Her guard lowered and she looked at Rias. I. Thank you for telling me. This dolt next to me decides to hide everything from his mother. Glaring at Issei, the man in question simply turned his gaze away from her. I was here to pick Issei up. The student council and I want to speak with him. It's regarding the heroic deed your son did. Mickey nodded. Sure. Just don't. Hurt my little goofball. Nodding to Mickey, Rias grabbed Issei's hands and rushed towards the school. Woman. Slow down. Never. Mickey could only watch the scene with a smile. Maybe she could somewhat trust this woman to be close to her son. When they got farther away, Rias hugged Issei. What's this? Getting all clingy. Did something bad happen again? Rias shook her head. No. I just wanted to hug you. 
Anyways, speaking with Sona and I was half of the situation. My brother wanted to speak to you. He wanted to meet with the person who saved me. Oh. Issei was taken aback. You have a brother. Ria's nervously chuckled. Let's say. I don't bring him up often because of what he might do to all the boys staring at me during school. Processing what she said, Issei widened his eyes and panicked. Does he not know my reputation at school? No. Plus, I think being my savior takes larger precedence than being a little bit perverted. Yeah. A little bit perverted. This woman did not have any clues on who he used to be. So. I'm back here in the occult building again. Issei asked while standing right in front of the front door with Rias. Yeah. I mean. The school doesn't look that great, and this is the closest we are getting to a private building. Rias turned her head to Issei before opening the door. Pouting and squinting her eyes, she spoke again. Do you not like my little home? It looks almost as old as some of our teachers. Don't be mean. Yes. Always be mean. Sighing, Rias opened the door, and inside the room was Rias Peerage and Sona. With Tsubaki and Saji. Oh. I didn't believe you Rias when you said Issei was the one who saved you. Sona began while lying Issei down. How powerful is he? Rias. Sona. Trust me when I say this. Even if my entire peerage and I were to fight him. He would destroy us. Sona was a little skeptical of that claim. This was Issei. The same man who was titled the perverted beast of Kuo. President. I don't really see what's so special about Issei. He just looks normal to me. Saji said while looking confused upon seeing Issei. If I look normal. How about every single one of you come and fight me? I'll take all challengers. Issei summoned his great sword and activated tank. Saji was the first to stand in front of Issei. Let's see what you are truly made of Issei. Name. Saji. Idol. Pawn of Sona. Race. Reincarnated Devil. Level. 12. HP. 750 750 MP. 250 250 STR. 11. Agle. 11. And. 15. Int. 10. Was this man really trying to challenge him when he couldn't even do anything to him? Issei had 23 levels over him. Saji literally couldn't do any damage to him. Saji rushed in with his fist reeled back aiming to take Issei down. When making contact with Issei's body, his fist stopped. The sheer damage reduction that Issei had nullified everything that Saji would be capable of doing. Really? You thought that would have worked? Grabbing Saji and slamming him into the ground, the bonus 230% damage increase Issei had made the simple slam absolutely annihilate Saji's body. Standing proud, Issei looked toward Sona and glared. Wasn't the brightest in the shed. Now, will we continue this meeting with violence or will we speak like actual normal people? Name. Sona. Idol. Heiress of the House of Citri. Race. Pure Devil. Level. 32. HP. 1600 1600. MP. 3250 3250. STR. 26. Agle. 30. And. 32. Int. 45. Plus 20. Bonus. Plus 20% magic damage. Issei noticed that she was just a weaker Rias. They both had the same build, pure magical damage, but Rias just had higher stats and a better bonus. If she was weaker than Rias, she was a joke compared to him. Sona held her queen piece back, she knew that sending her towards Issei would bring chaos. There was something about him. The way that he destroyed Saji. She got a glimpse of his power, and something was telling her that her entire peerage would get incinerated by him if they fought. Rias was watching this with a smug smile, knowing that Sona was going to get schooled. I'm sorry for that. Sometimes he does things without thinking about the consequences. He just cares about me greatly. Rias, let's begin this meeting. Rias, who was in the back corner secretly cheering Issei on, sighed in disappointment, she wanted to see Sona get her shit rocked by Issei. Well. This meeting was just to tell everyone who truly caused the abandoned church to collapse. I'm guessing it was Issei who did this. It wasn't really that hard to know that Issei did it when he was someone who Sona didn't know in the supernatural world. Rias pouted again. I really suck at making surprises. One day you'll become good. Issei jokingly said, causing her to scoff at him. Hiba and Akeno widened their eyes upon hearing the revelation. So, Issei was the one who killed them all. Kiba wanted to make sure that what he was hearing was the truth. Rias nodded causing for the two to sigh. They were lucky having Issei on their side rather than as their enemy. So. Was that really all you wanted from me? Rias shook her head. I also wanted to ask you for help. Fidgeting with her fingers, she looked up at Issei with a nervous expression. Could you. Help me and Sona defeat stray devils around. Ever since yesterday, I have been afraid of dealing with stray devils alone. Could you. Please beat them. I'll come with you. 
I'll reward you in any way. I just can't do it alone anymore. Issei heard it and was going to refuse it. However, he began thinking. If he continued getting closer to these people, the more rewards he would get. Not only was he going to get a title from this meeting. What else could he get? Could I get equipment? Rias nodded immediately. Maybe this would be worth it. Fine. Plus, he could level up from smaller quests he would get from helping this woman. Rias squealed and hugged Issei again and thanked him multiple times. Issei could only groan from the affection. This was like the third time within a single day that she had done this. Sona smiled before looking at Issei and speaking. Issei Haidu. I know we may have started off on the wrong page with my pawn disrespecting you. But I really am grateful for you. For you to help us. When I heard Rias was badly injured from a stray devil. I was worried for her and myself because my peerage and I are weaker than Rias. If she got destroyed, I could only worry what would have happened to me. Sona began walking towards the exit, not before saying one last thing. If you need help from me. Don't be afraid to ask. Not only that, I will also reward you for doing this. Issei nodded before a message showed up. Quest completed. Complete the meeting. Reward. New title unlocked. Title. The Guardian of Kuo. Passive bonus. Plus two to all stats. Issei smiled when seeing that. Another boost to his power and he would gladly take it. However, his smile was short-lived when he felt a massive presence within the room. Grabbing Rias and safely placing her behind him, Issei pulled out his great sword and shield and gritted his teeth towards the presence. So. This is your hero. Dear sister. His instincts of protecting you caught me by surprise. Standing in the middle of the room was Serzich's Lucifer. The King of Hell and his wife were right behind him. While everyone was already beginning to bow in respect to the Lucifer. While Issei could only shiver in fear. His eyes were widened. Rias, being the only other person within the room not bowing in the presence of Lucifer and his wife, shook Issei gently in worry. Are you alright? You. Didn't tell me. Your brother was a monster. Serzich's, upon hearing that, smirked before chuckling. Warning. 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 Opponent too powerful to be scanned with your current level. This was the first time that the system had done this. For the system to not be able to scan someone because of Issei's power. This was definitely something that he needed to try later when he was stronger. But this was monstrous. The pressure that Serzich's was releasing was a different level. Issei's legs were trying their best not to shake. But don't worry Issei. I'm not here to hurt you. Rather, I'm here to thank you. Walking towards Issei and Rias, Serzich's patted his sister's head and looked up to Issei. This idiot sometimes gets herself into danger that is too much for her. If it weren't for you. I wouldn't be seeing my adorable little sister standing here. Serzich's reached his hand out for a handshake. As a brother. I want to thank you for saving my sister. Reaching out and shaking the Lucifer's hand, Issei nodded. No problem. I wanted to reward you as a brother. For saving my sister. I'll give you anything. Choice 1. Ask for money. Choice 2. Ask for equipment. Choice 3. Ask for women. Choice 4. Ask for his sister's hand in engagement. Choice 5. Ask for nothing. Option 1 was useless when his system worked off its own currency. Option 3 was useless. What are women going to do when he is fighting a monster? Option 4 was also in the same boat. Useless. Option 5 was just the system trolling him. I would like to have another sword. Just like this. Showing his great sword to Serzich's, the Lucifer nodded. That's it. Nodding, Issei looked at the Lucifer in confusion. Yeah. Serzich's chuckled. You're truly built like a hero. I'm guessing you want another replica of this sword to help others. No. He just wanted another one to go all strength in the dungeons coming up. Why did they really misunderstood his intentions? Issei didn't really mind, the more rewards he gets. The safer he felt going into the dungeons. Well I get your reward in preparation, how about all of us sit down and talk somewhere? Rias squealed before speaking. How about we all go to your house Issei? That sounds like a wonderful idea. Serzich has added onto his sister's idea. Before Issei could refuse, they already teleported in front of his house. Rias was already knocking on the door. The problem with introverts hanging out with pure extroverts. Sometimes they just. Don't stop to think. Really? My son really helped you do that. Rias was at it again. Speaking about all the good things that he did during the meeting. He really thought he didn't do anything good. My little sister really admires your son. When Serzich's had shown up to his house, his mother was more welcoming seeing him make more friends, especially friends that looked very wealthy. That just made the fear of them using him just. Lesson since. What would they even use her son for? Grafia was sitting down next to Issei's mother while his father was gone again. Work really was demanding a lot from him. My husband isn't the brightest. 
but he's right when he says that his little sister truly does see your son as her hero. Riaz was blushing while Issei was staring up at the ceiling. He had received his reward not too long ago, before all these shenanigans happened. Hey. Don't say that in public brother. What am I saying that's wrong? Don't. Just don't. Don't say that. Tsurzichas chuckled at his sister's dismay. Oh, come on. What am I saying that is wrong? Riaz leaked towards her brother and began having a catfight with him, while Grafia screamed them to stop. Mickey could only chuckle. She wished that her son could have had these moments. She wished that her son could have had siblings. It saddened her to know the miscarriages could have been Issei's siblings. While they continued bickering, Issei received a new message saying that a new icon had opened up. Clicking on the icon, Issei noticed that the only things that were highlighted were his two great swords. Welcome to the infuse section of equipments. Here, you can take two of the same types of weapons and infuse them. This will bring them to being more powerful while taking one less lot of equipment. First infusion will be free. Clicking on his two great sword, Issei received a new message. 2x great sword, rare. Great sword, epic. Attribute increase. Plus 10, str. 2. Plus 15, str. Attribute added. Plus 10% pierce damage. Pierce damage. Damage that can cut through damage reduction depending on the percentage of pierce damage. Would you continue the infusion? Yes, no. Clicking yes, Issei would rather have one stronger sword and his shield, rather than two of the same swords, even if having two swords would bring more strength to him. Not only that, but that pierce damage would probably balance out the strength that would be lost. He would definitely take the steel. Once the infusion happened, Issei was happy with his newfound sword, and immediately replaced it with where his great sword used to be in his build. Now. He was much more powerful and felt more confident for the next dungeon. Speaking of which, he would definitely enter the new dungeon the moment that Riaz and her family would leave. Issei. Are you okay? His mother asked him while he continued staring at the ceiling. Yeah. I was just thinking about school. He was lying out of his ass with that one, and his mother knew it. Issei being studious, yeah like that would ever happen. The last time that happened was during a math test last year. He spent multiple hours and still only got an average score. His mother, seeing how he didn't want to actually answer her concern, just dropped asking and instead smiled. Guess what I'm making today? Cheesecake. Issei snapped his head towards his mother with a cheerful smile. He loved cheesecake. Really? Wait. Issei, is that a gaming console? Serzichas pointed towards the console sitting in front of Issei's television. Yeah. Why? You play Smash? Narrowing his eyes, Issei walked towards the console. What's your main? Luigi. Serzichas also narrowed his eyes back. Riaz watched as the tension in the room was beginning to increase. I am about to cook your ass in this game. Grabbing one of his controllers and throwing the other spare one at Serzich's, he looked to Riaz, who was staring back at him with puppy eyes, and threw another one of his spare controllers at her. I am about to cook both of you. Turning on the console. His mother looked at the three and sighed knowing that hell was going to break loose. Grabbing Grafia's arm, Mickey began dragging her to the kitchen. Come on. Let's leave the children alone with each other. I have some things I want to show you. Grafia didn't even get a word in as Mickey was going to have fun showing all her cooking recipes and receiving help from Grafia to make a large cheesecake for everyone in the room to enjoy. In a couple hours, all that was heard was. What the fuck? How the hell are you this good? Serzichas screamed while watching his dear Luigi getting three stock to Issei's Captain Falcon. Brother. I give up. A sobbing Riaz was seen getting comfort from her brother as Issei continued sitting back and enjoying watching the two suffer. Did he destroy them? Destroy would be generous to what he did. He still had three stocks, while Riaz and Serzichas were already eliminated. I don't know what to say. Just get better you scrubs. And he even shows no mercy. This monster is no hero. He is a sadistic monster. As the triumphant echoes of victory faded into the air, Issei couldn't help but bask in his glory, feeling like a conqueror of Smash. But his moment of self-satisfaction was short-lived as his mother returned from the kitchen, bearing a large cheesecake in her hands. Grafia was right behind, holding on to Mickey from tripping over from excitement of finishing her masterpiece. Behold. The fruit of our labor. She announced, presenting the decadent dessert like a trophy. Issei's eyes widened in awe, momentarily distracted from his gaming conquest. It's. It's beautiful. Grafia, standing beside his mother with a smirk, added. It looks almost too good to eat. Serzichas and little Rias, how about we all dig into this? Within seconds, the first person to arrive towards the cheesecake was Issei. With lightning speed, Issei grabbed a fork and plunged it into the creamy depths of the cheesecake, savoring the first heavenly bite. Instantly, he rushed towards the table in the middle of the living room, right in front of the television, and began munching on the cheesecake. 
Serzich's and Ria's, even if their pride were destroyed, still chuckled upon seeing Issei acting like an excited child, especially when he was nearly stoic throughout the entire day. I guess we should hop in as well. Ria's nodded to her brother's words, and the two quickly followed Issei. Serzich's still had his competitive gaze, trying to keep up with Issei's speed in devouring the cake. However, that was short-lived when Grafia stood behind him and gave him a smack on the top of his head. Have some manners when eating. Issei laughed at Serzich's dismay, however, that was short-lived when his mother also gave him a smack on the head. Hey. Don't you dare hey me. You were acting like an animal eating this cheesecake. You should also have some manners too. Ria's looked at the two and began giggling. That earned her two glares from both women. Ria shrunk back in fear and decided that maybe she should eat quietly. Little later, it was time for the three to leave. Issei watched as Ria's looked at him with a saddened expression. Walking up to him, Issei could only sigh knowing what was going to happen. Ria's hugged him tightly once more. Serzich's and Grafia were standing in front of the two and laughed at Issei's dismay. Sooner or later, the three left leaving Issei and his mother alone. Issei. What do you think of that girl? In an instant, Issei responded. She's an interesting. Friend. Just a friend. His mother teased, but Issei stared at her with an emotionless expression. Only a friend. With that, he walked past his mother before patting her on the head. Rest mom. You've already done so much today. With that, Issei walked up to his room. Finally, it was time to grind. Dungeon name. Dungeon of the Drakes. Recommended level. 30. Host is much higher level than the dungeon recommended level. Dungeon will be scaled upwards to be challenging for host. It was time for the grind. Entering the dungeon, Issei was met with a blazing inferno tornado right in front of him. Backing away, Issei narrowly dodged a lightning bolt striking the ground near him. Getting a better view of the area around him, Issei was met with an infernal hellscape. Dagged obsidian peaks rise from molten ground all around, while rivers of lava snake through desolate terrain that stretched into the oblivion. The sky, a canvas of swirling shadows, occasionally lit by bursts of sulfurous flames and infernal tornadoes. Amidst glowing veins of phosphorescent minerals, fiery geysers erupt, casting an ethereal light. However, what truly threw Issei off was the many drakes flying around. Soaring through the sky, there were nearly a thousand drakes all in the sky. Issei watched as all of them slowly began noticing him. This was going to be a hellish time for him. How long has it been? Issei has defeated many of the drakes. None of them were too powerful. They were just normal enemies, something that Issei could defeat without much difficulty. How many times had he leveled up? Was it four times? Five times? He had lost count since he had been at it for ten hours. He still hadn't met the conditions to fight the boss just yet. How many bronze coins did he get? Easily enough for two silver coins. I wonder. When will I be able to fight against the boss of this dungeon? Upon hearing that, Issei heard a loud screech behind him. Turning to see who was behind him. He was met with a draconic woman standing twice as tall as him with bloodshot eyes and purplish hair that flowed down her shoulders, while her draconic horns curled from the top of her head and continued looping in circles until they reached down to her hips. Mini boss incoming. Name. Elisa the Draconic Empress. Race. Drake. Idol. Draconic Empress. Level. 40. HP. 4800-4800. MP. 2700-2700. STR. 43, plus 20. Agle. 42, plus 8. End. 46, plus 18. Int. 36. Bonus. Pure immunity to fire. Alright. Here comes the mini boss. She was powerful, but Issei felt with all his damage reduction and his powerful great sword combined with his skills, he could overpower her in a clash. He just needed to deal a powerful lethal blow, and he would control the fight from there. Human. Enemy. Me. Devour. A few simple words and she lunged towards Issei. Grabbing his great sword, Issei activated Lion's Claw. The woman saw this and giggled thinking that Issei was an idiot to simply use this attack while she was lunging at him. Swiping her claws towards Issei, she was able to land a blow onto Issei. However, thanks to Issei's insane defense and his hyper armor from Lion's Claw, he was able to tank straight through the blow and a devastating blow of his own. Slamming the woman straight into the ground and shattering the obsidian surface, Issei heard her screech before summoning some flames from her mouth. Not taking any chances, Issei activated tank and quickly charged an energy wave with his sword and shot it straight towards the woman's fire breath. Issei's attack, thanks to his superior strength, was able to pierce straight through the fire breath. If it had not been for the dragon woman's quick reflexes, she would have been in critical shape. The only thing that was cut was her right wing when she dived to the right just in the brink of time. Blood began spewing out of her wings as Issei watched her glare at him with pure hatred. Human hurt me. Human bad. 
Before Issei could respond, he was kicked right in the side. Being sent flying, skidding across the surface, and coming to a halt by using his sword and stabbing it into the ground. Issei turned his attention to the new opponent. Mini boss incoming. Name. Elizabeth the Warrior. Race. Drake. Title. Draconic Warrior. Level. 39. HP. 55 50 55 50. MP. 3000 3000. STR. 40 plus 10. Bagel. 42 plus 8. End. 46 plus 28. Int. 40. Bonus. When next to her Empress, 10% increase to all stats. Another mini boss. Issei watched as the two communicated. Elizabeth. You come help me. Yes. My Empress. We both beat human together. But me eat human at end. Elizabeth pouted before nodding. Yes, my Empress. But can me have a little bit? Before Elisa could respond, Issei already sent another energy wave straight at her. Elisa couldn't dodge, but she was able to shield herself from taking the full brute force of the attack. Shit. Too many bosses. This might be a little annoying to deal with. Issei felt another disturbance coming in. Moving his shield to reflect the attack, Issei was barely able to parry another attack from a different opponent. Parrying the attack and stunning his opponent, Issei took his chance and kicked his new opponent away. Warning. Boss incoming. Name. Queen. Race. Dragon. Idol. Ruler of the Drakes. Level. 42. HP. 5625 5625. MP. 3975 3975. STR. 40 plus 23. Agle. 40 plus 8. End. 50 plus 25. Int. 53. Bonus. When next to her members, 10% increase to all stats per member. Issei widened his eyes too many bosses and the real boss. What was he supposed to do? He was outnumbered and was weaker in stats when taking all stats into consideration. Backing away, Issei watched the queen rush towards him again, Elisa wasn't far behind, while Elizabeth was right next to the queen. Activating tank once more, Issei rushed in with lion's claw ready. Charging up his blade, Issei watched as the queen had charged her fist with her flames. Readying his blade, Issei had to quickly block a powerful ball of flame from Elizabeth. While the smoke was up, Issei watched as the shadow of the queen came in. Activating Lion's Claw, Issei met the queen's hand with his blade. Another explosion occurred as the two were blown back. However, Issei halted his movements as Alyssa came into view. If one of them was singled out from the other, he had to take his chances. Charging up another energy wave with his sword, Issei blasted himself forward towards Alyssa. Her speed was superior to Issei, but the way that she moved, she wasn't experienced fighting humans like him. Slamming his foot into the ground, causing a small pillar of rocks to form in front of him, blinding the Empress a little, Issei swung his sword with all his might. The Empress, upon seeing the pillar, did the only thing that she could. She swung her claws forward, shattering the pillar. Watch out. The Queen screamed, but it was too late as a fully charged attack from Issei landed directly onto the head of the Empress. The only thing that she could see was red. The blow from Issei was so lethal from the sheer strength that he possessed that it immediately, thanks her to her health already being reduced greatly, crushed her head, and left her in a critical condition. Being limp on the floor with her vision beginning to blur, she could only watch as Issei followed through with another attack. Activating Lion's Claw and using all his remaining mana, Issei, even when he was blasted by both the Queen and Elizabeth, slammed his sword right on top of the same spot he attacked the Empress. Crushing her skull. Issei watched as a message popped up. Mini boss has been defeated. Reward. Level up x1. Standing with only his strength and endurance left, with no magic and many burn marks scattered through his body from the recent blow he tanked, Issei watched as the two remaining drakes rushed towards him in rage. That was my daughter. The queen screamed, diving straight into Issei with her entire body engulfed in flames. Using his sword, Issei was able to block out most of the impact, but the flames still had slightly burned him. Elizabeth came from behind aiming to bite Issei's neck while he wasn't paying attention. However, Issei ducked just in time to dodge the assassination attempt. Twirling around with great sword, Issei was able to hit Elizabeth straight into her stomach, sending her flying back. However, Issei wasn't fast enough to react to the queen's flaming hook landing straight onto his face. Burning his very flesh with a blow, Issei was shot flying back. Going through a flaming geyser, Issei watched as his clothes were burned straight off. Once recovering his composure, Issei looked up to see the queen sending a powerful laser straight towards him. Using his sword, Issei was able to block a very minimal amount of the damage, as the laser beam still burned his entire body. Standing with barely any health remaining, Issei could only watch as Elizabeth came rushing in. The queen wasn't too far from her. Issei was left with a decision. 
he needed to cut Elizabeth down before dealing with the queen. Currently, the queen was too much for him if Elizabeth was around. Entering the shop, Issei quickly purchased a mana potion for three bronze coins. Right when he was done drinking that, Elizabeth came in with her fist reeled back. Activating Lion's Chloride on time, Issei was able to dodge the attack and land a powerful Lion's Chloride on the top of the woman's head. Slamming her straight into the ground, Issei was inevitably snipped by the queen. Landing a critical hit straight onto Issei's chest with her laser beam. Issei was shot straight into the ground where he remained. Finally. Human is done. The queen stated before helping Eliabeth. Watching the queen begin walking towards the human, Elizabeth remained a little terrified if the human would get back up. Wait. Queen. Let me check on human. The queen nodded before backing away while Elizabeth began approaching the human. Her heart began racing. What if the human was still alive? When Elizabeth was in front of the human. There was something strange. There was an empty bottle right next to the human. Confused, she tilted her head and turned around to see her queen. She didn't know what to do. Never lower your guard, bitch. Before she could react, Elizabeth's head was sliced straight off from Issei's sword. Aiming straight for her neck, where there was no armor protecting the drake, Issei knew that it was the critical spot. Standing with more of his health back, Issei watched as it was only him versus the queen. Mini boss has been defeated. Reward. Level up x1. Skill leveled up. Tank and lion's claw. Tank, level 1, 2. Iron flesh, level 2. The tails. The skill allows for the user to become the embodiment of defense. The user will still get 5% endurance and strength gains, but the user will also gain 10% damage reduction. The cost of the skill being activated will now be 3 MP per second. 15% HP healed upon using the skill, once only during battle. Lion's Claw, Level 1, 2. Berserker Wrath, Level 2. The Tails. The skill allows for the user to have Ultra Hyper Armor to penetrate straight through nearly all attacks. Upon piercing through all attacks, the user will have 5% damage reduction, depending on the strength the user has compared to their opponents. Will allow for the blow, upon contact, to deal 50% more damage, and 10% pierce damage. 20 MP per use. Smirking, this was going to be annihilation. Popping another mana potion while the queen was shocked upon seeing her fellow comrade being butchered right in front of her, Issei was activated iron flesh and felt a little heavier, but he didn't care. His damage reduction was easily past 50%. Running straight towards the queen, he didn't have much time since Iron Flesh drains MP a lot faster than tank. The queen blasted a powerful laser straight at Issei. Issei, being the absolute unit that he was, activated Berserker Wrath and penetrated straight through the attack, not tanking much damage, since he was closer in level to the queen and had 15% more damage reduction, Issei slammed his sword straight onto the queen head. Not letting her off, Issei grabbed her with his fist and began pummeling her. When she tried to use her wings and tail as a way to swat Issei, he simply grabbed her wings and ripped them off her body. Screaming, Issei grabbed her jaw and ripped it off with his pure strength. Without her members, she was not only much weaker thanks to her bonus, but Issei was just getting stronger. Without giving her another chance, Issei stabbed his sword, with all his strength and power, straight through her head. Please human. Show mercy. This shit again. Issei clenched his teeth and slammed his sword right into the woman's back. She had the audacity to beg for forgiveness when she wanted to kill him without any good reason. Dropping his sword, Issei began mercilessly beating the woman with his fists. Blow after blow. Blood was beginning to pour down onto the ground, with the pool growing larger and larger by the second. The woman's face began getting unrecognizable. Issei threw the woman straight into the air and threw his sword to follow. Piercing straight through the woman's gut. Issei jumped up and, using his legs and placing them on her back while grabbing the handle of his sword, Issei pulled his sword upwards and ripped the woman in half. The queen had fallen. Dungeon completed. Reward. Level up x3. New title obtained. Plus new equipment. Well. He finally finished the dungeon. Even if he was burned to a crisp. He definitely needs to make sure to have some potions pre-bought, rather than having to buy them and then opening them up in his inventory. Landing straight on his head. Some boots were in his hands. Armor. Draconic boots. Rarity. Rare. Attributes. Plus 3 endurance. Plus 3 agility. Plus 5% damage reduction. The tails. Boots from the scales of the many drakes that have been killed. Soldiers used these to fight against their kind. They provided extra armor and somehow were very light on the feet. New title unlocked. Drake Slayer. Effects. 30% damage when fighting against drakes. Those boots were great. The title was useless though. He didn't really he was going to be fighting against drakes anytime soon. Looking at his stats, Issei was just about done with fighting in this dungeon. Name. Issei Haidu. 
Idol. Guardian of Kuo. Brace. Iron Golem. Level. 45. HP. 1700s. MP. 0490. STR. 66.5, plus 17. Agle 57, plus 1. End. 58, plus 16. Int. 47, plus 2. Bonus. 48%, damage reduction. Skills. Iron Flesh. Berserk Wrath. Energy Wave. Issei landed right back on his bed. Trying to recover from the damage that was done. He did not need his mother or father to walk into the room. It would create too much of an issue. Closing his eyes. He felt so exhausted. He didn't want to do anything. That was when she attacked him again. His heart began beating at an abnormal rate before the white aura began calming him down. She was still there. He would kill her. Getting up, he would decide to go outside and explore the town's outskirts to calm his mind. While this happened, there was a specific someone that was entering the forest near this town. With her bow at hand and her huntresses on her side, she was ready to explore and hunt on the sacred ground. She decided that she would explore this area because she thought it would be great hunting grounds for her newest members of her pack. With her beautiful face, with her angelic platinum hair flowing down to her hips, with her goddess-like curvy figure, she stood with a stern expression. Her majestic sapphire-colored eyes narrowing into near slits watching her huntresses bickering amongst each other. My lady. What should be our first move here? One of her huntresses asked. Artemis looked upon her youngest member and responded. We must first build a place for us to call home for the time being. We all will work together until this home has been built. Nodding to their lady's request, the huntresses began flocking the open area near them. They began gathering resources to begin. The experienced ones, the ones that have been in the pack for many years, were teaching the youngest members how to properly make tents. While doing that, Artemis heard a branch snap from the far distance. Deciding to deal with whatever was near them, she immediately blasted towards whoever was near them. Upon arriving, she noticed a large brunette standing in the middle of a clear area with the trees spaced out, allowing for the sun to shine down upon the brunette. Seething with disgust and rage upon seeing a man, Artemis angrily began drawing her bow. However, something within her told her to stop. There was something strange about this man. He was just. Staring at the sky. It confused her. Issei turned around and saw the beautiful woman in front of him. Rather than blushing or shying away, he looked at her with an emotionless expression. Rather than greeting her or saying anything to her, he began walking away. He was more keen on exploring the forest and seeing the many things that he couldn't as a child. It was quite relaxing, especially when he could move at a much faster pace. Halt. Warning. 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 The opponent too powerful to be scanned with your current level. She was also a monster in power. Instead of panicking, Issei quickly became emotionless and stared at her. The more he freaked out internally. The more the white aura calmed him down. What? What are you doing around here? Exploration. What? She was confused with the response. Exploration. Why on earth was this man exploring this forest? I've got to explore this place. So. Could you not bother me? He politely asked her, but Artemis sneered and began drawing her bow. But there was something about this mortal. He looked at her without lust or. Any intentions. He was just. Staring at her as if she was just. Nothing. Never had she ever had a mortal man ever see her as nothing. They have always been with intentions of using her. Her beauty, it was divine, it would swoon in all men. Her chivalry was on a different level. It would bring all the respect from men. Even though she despised men, she just. Didn't understand. Why did she mean nothing to this man? Tell me. I want you to answer me with honesty or else I'll kill you right here and right now. Man. The last part came out in a venomous tone. What do you see me as? Do you see me as a goddess? Do you see me? I see you as someone who's bothering me. Shocked to the core upon hearing that, Artemis just didn't know what she could say. She looked at Issei with. Confusion. She didn't want attention. But she just didn't understand. No. Why don't you see me as someone different? Why don't you see me as a true goddess? Why would I? Again, the word sent Artemis into a spiral of confusion. Because I'm Artemis. I only see people as three things. Family, friend, or foe. That's it. What? While Artemis was going through a dilemma, Issei began walking away quietly. That. Doesn't make sense. By the time Artemis looked up from her confusion, Issei was already gone. Where did he go? Issei was walking back to his house. So. Talking with Artemis. She randomly showed up, was leagues above him in power. Like leagues beyond leagues above him in power. And thanks to his system calming him down every second, he was able to speak normally with her. Problem is. He may or may not have pissed off the goddess that hates all men. Issei was just relieved that he was done with dealing with her. 
However, Artemis wasn't going to let his say go. Following him, she was able to sense him and was easily able to track him down. Her speed being light years ahead of him, she was already watching him from the distance. She was curious. What made him so? Normal around her. What made him so? Different from Orion. He approached another flock of girls. Artemis was ready to see how he would. He just walked right past them without noticing them. Aren't boys his age desperate for women? What is up with this boy? Sitting down. Artemis continued observing the boy from afar. That was when she noticed him approaching a store. It was a bikini store. Ha. I knew it. Every man has internal. Why did he just walk past it? Wait. Is he walking into that? Are those small action figures? Artemis was baffled when watching Issei walk right into the Gundam shop. Artemis followed. Entering the shop as well, she was met the store being incredibly small. It was basically the size of two small bedrooms. What made this? Old and dusty place so special. That was when she noticed the brunette staring at the shelves. What is? So important about these action figures. Walking along to one of the shelves, Artemis saw the different sizes of these mech action figures. What's so fascinating about these action figures? Oh. You also like Gundams. Issei didn't know who he was talking to. He was just seeing a woman standing in front of the shelves and decided that maybe he could help her out. Aye. What's so amazing about these? Artemis still didn't turn to Issei. Woman, these Gundams are insane. They've got epic battles, laser swords, and they look so clean. Plus, you can customize them with different weapons and armor. And the best part. They're like giant robots fighting for justice. Issei said with stars in his eyes. Artemis turned her head slightly and couldn't stop herself from giggling. What is up with this kid? Not only that, but they come in different sizes. Different sizes? Issei nodded and immediately reached out to grab the perfect grade. These are the perfect grades, the largest and the most expensive. They have many parts, but they are so worth it. Artemis watched as Issei carefully examined the perfect grade Gundam, his enthusiasm infectious despite her initial confusion. She couldn't help but be intrigued by his passion for these mechanical figures. It was so wholesome watching this giant of a man being so infatuated with such small action figures. Interesting. She remarked, finally turning to face him fully. So, they're like intricate puzzles, but once assembled, they become symbols of power and justice. Yeah. Do you want one? I was going to buy one, probably the perfect grade class of them, but I can help someone buy their first model. It will have to be the cheapest model, I don't really have much money. Issei finally looked at the woman in the face and saw who it was. It's you. I didn't expect to find you here. I thought you were in the forest. I was. But then I. Artemis was a little stumped. She couldn't just say that she was following him. However, Issei was the first to answer. I didn't know you liked Gundams this much. That's so cool. Issei was a massive Gundam fan. A super massive Gundam fan. Artemis took her opportunity and nodded to not look weird. I. Was just checking out the store. I will be back to buy some of these mechs in the future. With that, an embarrassed Artemis quickly fled the scene, leaving Issei bambazzled. Reputation with Artemis had increased. Artemis. Dislikes you. If she disliked him now. What did she think of him before? This meeting with Artemis was something. After purchasing the Gundam, Issei was walking along the sidewalks to his house, Issei was interrupted when another emergency quest line came in. Emergency quest. Some of Artemis's huntresses are in deep danger while she is paying attendance to her father. The tales. There is a cyclops near them, make sure to save them. Rewards. Plus 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 reputation with Artemis. Plus reputation with the huntresses. This will bring you to have more connections with the Greeks. This could result in more protection and more rewards. This must be strange. He just met the woman and here he was saving her people. Was the system trying to lean him into being a hero? Was it trying to choose his future? I mean, he could ignore the quest. But now seeing the rewards from Rhea's from helping her out. He could only wonder what he could get from helping a goddess out. Opening the menu once more, he noticed a map icon. Opening the icon, Issei noticed that it was a large map of Kuo and the forest neared. There was a yellow arrow that was highlighting where he needed to go for the quest. While Issei was running towards the event, what truly happened for Artemis's huntresses to be fighting against a cyclops? A few minutes ago, one of her huntresses was collecting sticks. She was the youngest one. Her name was Sophia. A petite woman with blonde hair and bright blue eyes. She didn't know what she was doing, but she wanted to be helpful since Artemis had given her a home when she could have been rotting on the streets. She wanted to be useful to her lady. But Sophia was her friend Veronica, she had purple hair and was slightly older and taller than her friend Sophia. Veronica was making sure that Sophia wasn't walking into death trap around the area. 
They may have been more powerful than regular humans, but they weren't as strong as some of the larger and more dangerous beings in the supernatural world. Veronica. I collected 15 sticks. Sophia exclaimed while showing her arms filled with sticks. Is this enough for our tent? With my 20 sticks. Not even close to being enough. We may be able to borrow some cloth from the others, but we still need sticks for the fire and to sustain the fire. Veronica spoke while collecting a few more sticks. Just place it inside my bag. Veronica pointed towards her rather large heavy-duty black bag on her back. Sophia nodded before opening the bag and placing the sticks inside. Do you think our lady will appreciate our work? I even collected some shiny rocks for her. Sophia spoke while having her big, adorable blue eyes glued to Veronica. I don't know. But we can hope that our lady will be happy. We worked together and did everything that all the big girls need help with all by ourselves. Sophia squealed before the ground began rumbling. What was that? Veronica shrugged her shoulders. Probably just a bear or something. Come on, let's continue finishing the job. Sophia nodded, being a little shaken up, but nevertheless, she continued helping Veronica. However, the rumble continued again. That was when Sophia noticed a rather large branch sticking out of the ground in the middle of an open field. Seeing the sheer size of the branch, she knew that she needed to get it. It would easily be enough to make a fire last all by itself. Walking over to the branch. Once touching the branch. That was when a huge body began rupturing through the surface. Sophia could only scream upon seeing the black skin belonging to the towering giant, beginning to appear clearer to her. The single eye that the monster had begun opening which showed the vicious glare that the creature held onto her. Veronica, upon seeing the cyclops, grabbed Sophia and brought her back. A few huntresses near the area gathered around. They knew that they were in hell. Once the cyclops finally registered where it was, it roared. Shaking the entire place around with a roar, Veronica and the huntresses began drawing their bows. They shot the arrows, aiming for the eyes, but the cyclops was far too quick. Using its arm to shield itself from the arrows, the cyclops, being easily 10 meters in height, slammed its arm down onto the ground and shook the entire surface around. The sheer power behind the slam caused the trees nearby to collapse. Veronica watched as the nearest tree to them began falling on top of them, but the cyclops wasn't done just yet. Eyeing Veronica and Sophia, the cyclops rushed in at alarming speed. Slamming its hands down, Veronica could only watch as the hands narrowly missed her entire body, but crushed her legs. Screaming in pain, she needed to get Sophia away. Turning to Sophia, she could only watch in horror as Sophia had her arms crushed from the impact. The cyclops released another scream before attempting to go for another slam to crush the puny huntresses. However, before he could, the huntresses released another barrage of arrows. Which did absolutely nothing to him. The only thing that the arrows did was anger the cyclops. Closing her eyes, Veronica could only apologize to her lady for causing her huntresses to be in danger. However, the fatal blow never came. But she heard a screech belonging to the cyclops. Fuck. I missed the head again. That voice. It didn't belong to any huntress. Opening her eyes, standing in front of her was a brunette that also easily dwarfed her frame. What she noticed was the cyclops had a missing right arm. Issei had arrived. While the cyclops was focusing on the two girls, he threw his sword into the right arm of the cyclops and quickly spun his sword within the cyclops's arm and ripped straight through the arm. On the ground next to the cyclops was the missing arm. Name. Cyclops. Race. Cyclops. Idol. Cyclops. Level. 37. HP. 33504650. MP. 32320ths. STR. 52 plus 20. Agle. 23. End. 62. Int. 32. Bonus. Plus 30% damage reduction. This was going to be an annihilation. Grabbing his great sword and rushing in while activating iron flesh, Issei simply charged his sword up with his magic and activated Berserk Wrath. Since he was 8 levels higher, he not only had 80% extra damage reduction, but he also dished out 80% more damage. Aiming for the head, with his immense speed advantage, Issei was able to slice the Cyclops clean in half. Well. Now I know what I can do to Rias if she was to get on my bad side. Issei jokingly said to himself. Emergency quest completed. Some of Artemis's huntresses are in deep danger while she is paying attendance to her father. Rewards. Plus 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 reputation with Artemis. Plus reputation with the huntresses. Issei turned to see Artemis already being here. She looked at him with widened eyes and turned her gaze to her two little huntresses. Rushing over to them, she hugged the two tightly. Kissing the two on the foreheads and beginning to tear up, she could only say. I'm so glad you two are okay. What were you two thinking going here all alone? Veronica, even through the immense pain and sobbing, responded for both her and Sophia, who was barely clinging onto her consciousness. 
We wanted to make you happy. My lady. You have done so much for us. We didn't want to bother you so we decided to work together and. And. Build our tent alone. Artemis could only slap her on the face. You idiots. What matters to me is if you two are alive. I brought you into my group because I wanted you two to have a family. To become a part of my family. Issei only watched this in. Sadness. This reminded him of his mother. Crying a couple days ago when he went missing. Speaking of which, he needed to get back home. Knowing that he got his reward, Issei began walking away. Artemis, upon hearing footsteps moving away, turned to see Issei walking into the forest. Wait. Don't leave just yet. Sorry. But my mother is waiting. Did this woman truly try stopping him? Did she not know who his mother was when she was angry? Still carrying his Gundam on his arms, Issei quickly dashed away. Artemis could only watch the figure of Issei moving away into the darkness. Without him. She would have lost two of her family members. She would have lost Sophia and Veronica. Artemis was truly grateful of Issei. Even if she disliked men. She was truly grateful. And happy to know that Issei was there to save her children. Bad boy. He's. A hero. Artemis said while still holding on to Veronica and Sophia for dear life. I want to know. Your name boy. But Issei, he was swinging from tree to tree, trying to get back to his home as soon as possible. It was 3.56 pm right now, and his mother wanted him back home by 4 pm. His father was also wanting him to be back home by then. Got a lock in. And he began moving even faster than before. Reputation with Artemis has increased. Artemis. Is grateful to you and sees you as a good man. She thinks of you as a hero in some sort. She is definitely not going to let you go. Fuck. 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 Now he had to deal with Rhea seeing him as a hero and a fucking god is seeing him as a hero. He better get a good reward for this or something. How did you even find my house? It had only been one day and Artemis was back in front of his house. She had found where he had lived by just sensing his presence. Issei really did suck at hiding his presence. What do you mean? I found you pretty easily. That's beside the point. I wanted you ask you. Why did you save my huntresses? Issei kind of figured that this might have been asked since Artemis was the goddess that supposedly hated all men. Being honest with you. I saw two human girls about to be butchered by a giant one-eyed monster. My instincts told me to come in and intervene. So I did. Artemis looked at him with a skeptical look. She had met many people that did the same, but for some intentions of their own. However, just the emotionless stare that Issei gave her made her believe otherwise. There was no intentions in those eyes. It was just a man being. A hero. Could you hurry up? I have school to go to. Artemis widened her eyes and looked at him in shock. What do you mean you have school to go to? You're not. An adult. I thought you were done with school. Hey. I'm not that old. I still have. This year and next year of high school. Artemis was. Just so. Confused with this boy. How could he be this? Emotionless and also this gigantic but still be a high school boy? Never mind that, she just wanted to know where her savior lived. While Issa was thinking something completely different. This woman has to leave quickly. If my mom finds out I'm talking with another girl. She would go crazy. My dad wouldn't really care since he believes that I have everything under control. However, there was something bothering him. He didn't want to be stickler, but one piece of her hair was sticking out and he just couldn't get his eyes off of it. Alright. Let me do this really quickly. Moving his hands, he watched as Artemis tensed and narrowed her eyes, but Issei didn't care. Gently pulling that one piece of hair down, he sighed in relief. Now he could look at her in the eyes rather than that one piece of hair strand. Now what would he say? His mother always told him to compliment someone when the situation was weird. It would direct the conversation somewhere else. Sorry. There was a single strand of hair that was poking out and it really bothered me. Your hair was beautiful and that one piece of hair was ruining its symmetry. Now you look perfect. Fuck, he hated how he was forced to say something so corny. However, when he looked at Artemis's face, she was blushing slightly. Shit. I embarrassed her. I need to leave before shit goes down here. Taking his bag, Issei patted Artemis on the head and ran off saying he had class in a couple of minutes. That was. The first time someone had patted my head like that. I. Liked it. A lot. Reputation with Artemis has increased. He shut that message immediately. He wasn't going to deal with that right now. Now, here he was going to school. Approaching the main entrance, he saw Rhea standing right there. Upon seeing Issei, her entire face cheered up and she ran to him. Everyone else in the area was shocked that she would even dare approach the pervert of the academy. One thing Issei did notice was that no one cared about his appearance change, which meant that Rias had changed the minds of everyone in the entire town to think that Issei was this behemoth from the very start. 
Before Rias could reach Issei, Cadiz, one of the people who deeply despised Issei, stopped Rias and shook her head. I'm sorry Rias, but I can't allow one of the very queens of this academy to come anywhere near Issei. Rias glared at her and watched as Issei began walking away. What do you mean? Issei is my friend. Addis remained strong. Sorry Rias, but this is for your own good. I don't want you to be corrupted by any diseases that disgusting man has. You speak as if I'm a useless piece of shit. There was just something about her speaking to him like this that was beginning to piss him off. Something about her looking down upon him and treating him like he's a waste of space. Addis glared at Issei before turning back to Rias. He's not even worthy of words at this point. Please Rias. Rias grabbed Caddis by the neck and brought her face to face to her. I want you to understand one thing. You don't make decisions for me, and just because he's a pervert doesn't mean he's some insignificant being. He's far more of a human and hero than you will ever be. One more thing. No one talks shit about my friends. Especially my hero. Throwing her onto the ground, Rias watched as Issei walked away. She clenched her teeth and looked down at Caddis with rage. This bitch ruined this perfect reunion. Sighing in frustration, Rias walked off to her class leaving Caddis to think over what happened. Sitting down in class, Issei watched as everyone began getting ready for his class. To his surprise, his two friends weren't here today. Today was definitely going to be a boring day. If he skipped classes, he would get a phone call sent home. The reason why he was able to skip last time was because. They thought he was kept at the occult building for the entire day. He didn't have that excuse anymore. Closing his eyes, he began falling asleep before Caddis slammed her hands into the desk. What did you do to Rias? Looking up at her with his regular emotionless stare, Issei watched as Caddis was seething in rage. Rias. I did nothing. Bullshit. Why are you close to her, you pervert? Say that word again and I'll show you why they call you a bitch for a reason. Issei interrupted her immediately. The amount of times he had heard himself being called pervert and being singled out from his peers for it began to anger him. Not only that, but this was one of the very women that used to beat him with a stick mercilessly. Excuse me. Coming from a woman with a mouth as large as yours. It's not surprising to be honest you would talk more than you can think. What? Speaking of which. I never have seen your mother even during family visits. Was it true that you were a mistake made in a bathroom because I can definitely see the brain rot kicking in and the mother not loving you showing vibe. That definitely hit hard for the girl, but Issei didn't stop there. I mean. Like come on. You think you're this top woman in the school yet you still don't have a boyfriend or any actual useful hobbies. Kendo ain't saving you when you're in a street fight. Why you? I double dog dare you to use your sticks on me. No, I triple dog dare you to try bitch. I'll rip you to shreds this time. Issei spoke with such hatred and anger that it shook Caddis and everyone in class to the core. Looking at the girl who was frightened and everyone else who was silent. Issei thought he went a little too far. He sighed and said. I was just ranting. I need to cool off. With that, he got up from his desk and walked out of class, leaving the entire classroom silent. That was the first time that they have ever seen Issei that angry before and the first time that they ever seen him blow a fuse. Caddis was left speechless. Part of her was shocked in seeing Issei like that, and the other part was angered from what he said. Another person in the class had noticed this behavior, Kiba was watching this from afar. He felt saddened for Issei knowing that he would forever be known as the pervert at the academy when he was much more. He was a hero. He was the same person that saved him and his master from dying. He was the very same person to risk his life in saving his master. He hated watching his hero be shamelessly disgraced for his childish habits. While walking in the hallways, he came across Sona and Rias talking with each other. Upon seeing Issei, Rias stopped and waved childishly. Issei. Seeing her, Issei was beginning to be grateful for Rias and Sona being the only few people that didn't despise him for being a pervert. Sona tilted her glasses and gave Issei a knowing nod. Hey Rias. Hey Sona. How are you doing on this fine day? Sona shook her head at Rhea's terrible acting, of trying to be different with her greetings. Why aren't you in class? I'm taking a break. Could you do me a favor? Rhea's and Sona, upon hearing Issei's dejected tone, narrowed their eyes slightly. This was the first time that they had ever heard him being dejected. What's the favor? Give me the locations of the strays around. I'll deal with them alone. Wait, Issei I want. Rhea's was interrupted sharply by Issei. I want to go. Solo. The tone and the look Issei had, it asked for no more questioning. Sona summoned some papers and gave them to Issei. There was something definitely wrong. Thank you. I'll be taking a break from school. Could you prevent the school from calling my parents? Sona nodded, but before she or Rias could ask Issei for anything else, Issei disappeared from sight. He decided that he would grind in the dungeon of the drakes. Rias. Something is definitely wrong. Rias nodded and looked a little saddened from Issei's dejected tone. 
I think I have a clue. I think I know what is happening. Rhea said while well, Sona tilted her head confused. This is going to be a long talk between us. It was a long time. Issei didn't show up for a day straight. He didn't want to show up. The only time he would show up would be to leave a note for his mother that he wouldn't be home. For the entirety of the day, Issei was grinding it at the dungeon. Obtaining as many experience points as he could. If he could obtain 5 levels in 10 to 12 hours here in the dungeon, he could easily obtain 10 if he could grind for an entire day. Wrong. He only obtained 7 levels from grinding it here in the dungeon for that length of time. Leaving dungeon. Rewards received. Plus 8 silver coins and 18 bronze coins. That was all that he got. With his current 2 silver coins, he had obtained 10 silver coins in the last couple of days from this dungeon alone. Opening up the shop, Issei wanted to see what he could get with all his coins. He had 10 silver coins. And that's all. He already spent 3 bronze coins and 15 bronze coins for a health potion, and a small mana potion, for when he fought the 3 bosses of the dungeon. So. The 18 bronze coins were just making up for the loss. Rare, Shield of Judgment. 1 silver coin. Rare, Great Sword. 1 silver coin and 25 bronze coins. Epic, Ruins Great Sword. 5 silver coin. Rare, Gold Chest Plate. 1 silver and 5 bronze coins. Epic, Great Shield. 5 silver coins and 25 bronze coins. Epic, Iron Great Shield. 9 silver coins. Elf Potion. 5 bronze coins. Mana Potion. 3 bronze coins. Larger Health Potion. 15 bronze coins. Larger Mana Potion. 10 bronze coins. Issei spent nearly all his coins and bought the Iron Great Shield. Equipment. Iron Great Shield. Rarity. Epic. Attributes. Plus 3 Strength. Plus 10 Endurance. Minus 5, Agility. Plus 25% Damage Reduction. Requirements. 50 STR. Details. A shield forged by the Warriors of Olympus, made to combat the very titans that they fought. These shields would be given to some of the lesser gods to fight off against some of the attacks from the titans. With that, Issei began adjusting his stats to be as prepared as he could be for his next mission. Name. Issei Haidu. Idol. Guardian of Kuo. Race. Iron Golem. Level. 52. HP. 8600-8600. MP. 560-560s. STR. 77, plus 20. Bagel 67.5, minus 2. End. 65, plus 21. Int. 54, plus 2. Bonus. 63%, damage reduction. Skills. Iron Flesh. Berserk Wrath. Energy Wave. Standing proud, Issei walked through the portal that opened up in front of him. Wait, portal. What the hell was this portal appearing in front of him for? Since host decided to teleport to dungeon from school, host will be teleported to outside of the forest and away from humanity. Okay. He didn't really have anything else to say. He walked into the portal and found himself in the forest where Artemis's huntresses had decided to stay at. Fuck. That was when he found Artemis staring right at him. How did you? Where did you even come from? Teleportation. Issei answered with. I don't even. You. Why are you so confusing? Artemis just didn't understand this boy at all. Without saying anything, Issei began walking away. Artemis watched his back. Hesitant in asking what she wanted to say. She wanted to ask this question. She wanted to get confirmation from someone that wasn't a part of her family. Opening her mouth, she screamed. Wait. Issei, turning around with his same emotionless expression, saw her looking at him with a hesitant expression. I wanted to ask you. Could you accompany me to a walk? A walk? Yeah. Just a walk. Issei was going to refuse, but Artemis quickly pressed on. Please. I just want to ask you something. Seeing as though she wasn't going to let him go, Issei nodded. Alright. As they walked deeper into the forest, Issei couldn't help but notice the tension in Artemis's posture. Her usually confident stride seemed weighed down by invisible burdens, and the lines of worry etched across her brow, betrayed her inner turmoil. The dense canopy overhead filtered the sunlight into dappled patterns that danced across the forest floor, casting an ethereal glow around them. Issei stole glances at Artemis, observing the way her gaze flickered nervously between the towering trees and the path ahead. Artemis hesitated, then finally spoke, her voice soft yet tinged with uncertainty. I suppose you're wondering why I ask you to accompany me, aren't you? Issei nodded, his expression neutral as ever, allowing her to continue at her own pace. It's kind of weird that the goddess of the hunt would want a man like me to accompany her in anything. I? I've been grappling with doubts. Artemis admitted, her words carrying the weight of vulnerability. 
As the goddess of the hunt, I am expected to lead my huntresses with unwavering confidence and strength. But lately, I find myself questioning whether I am truly fit to guide them. You saw. My lack of proper guidance had nearly caused two of my youngest members to die. She paused, the silence enveloping them like a comforting shroud, before she continued, her voice barely above a whisper. I fear that I am failing them. That my decisions are leading them astray, endangering their lives. My decisions are not. The best for them. Issei listened attentively, his demeanor calm and receptive. He didn't understand the weight of responsibility, the burden of leadership, and the struggles that Artemis was going through, but he didn't want to be just sitting there and listening on her struggles without being somewhat helpful. It just didn't feel right to him. I'm pretty sure you know that I don't have much experience in that field at all. Issei remarked gently, Artemis could only nod knowing that he was still just a kid in high school, but Issei continued. But what I could say is that. Why do you doubt yourself? Was your father always a perfect leader? I'm 100% positive that Zeus had struggled through the same thing as you right now and doubted himself. And look at where he is right now. No. My father sometimes messed up. Artemis. From the little I have seen of you and the stories I have heard of you. You're the perfect balance between being the perfect leader and the perfect mother figure. You care for your members as if they are your children. You guide them as if they are your children. Issei said while grabbing a small little flower off the ground and beginning to pick the pellets off of it. I don't know if you watch cartoons or television, but all great leaders from those shows always doubted themselves after failing. I see you in the same way. If you didn't doubt yourself at all. I would have then thought of you as a bad leader. Artemis wanted to hear the words from someone else that wasn't from her family. Even if Issei's words were cliché and didn't have the explosive feeling that she wanted. Just hearing it from someone that she had never interacted much with, and someone that wasn't her father or her huntresses. It was refreshing. Hearing the words coming out of this young boy. It was something that she wanted to hear. There was a saying out there. I am not afraid of an army of lions led by a sheep, but afraid of an army of sheep led by a lion. Issei stopped to turn to Artemis, who was glowing by the moonlight reflecting off her beautiful, majestic silver hair. To be honest. If I was in your shoes. Dear God. Everyone must be praying because I sure as hell would be bringing the huntresses down with me. Issei jokingly said causing for Artemis to laugh at the goofball. Before they could continue talking, that was when a petite blonde-haired girl showed herself to Artemis again. My lady. I have done what you asked of me. When she turned to see who Artemis was talking to, she squealed. It's the big muscular brown-haired dummy. Dummy? What the? I may or may not have told this little girl that all men are dummies. Oops. Artemis childishly giggled upon seeing Issei's bambazzled expression. Issei shook his head and watched as Sophia rushed towards him and hugged him. She began sobbing into his shirt. Thank you. Without you. I would have. Veronica would have. Issei did the best thing that he could have. Watching all those animes really did help him with this. He patted the little girl's head and picked her up. Facing her sobbing face to his face, he could only smile gently. No need to think of the ifs. Think of what happened. I was there and I came to save you. Now. Why am I a dummy? Sophia began giggling while still crying. My lady said that all men are big dummies. Are you a big dummy? Issei's gentle smile softened as he looked into Sophia's tear-streaked face, his heart warming at the innocence and vulnerability of the young girl before him. He decided to humor the little girl and played along with her. Well, Sophia, I suppose it depends on who you ask. Issei replied playfully, his tone light and reassuring. Some might say I'm a big dummy, while others might say I'm just a regular dummy. And some might even say I'm not even a dummy. Sophia giggled through her tears, her small frame shaking with mirth as she clung to Issei's shirt. But you saved us, Mr. Dummy. You're the best dummy ever. Issei chuckled, feeling a swell of affection for the spirited young girl in his arms. She was just so. Innocent and adorable. Well, if being a dummy means saving the day, then I'll gladly wear that title with confidence. Placing her on his shoulder, Sophia could only squeal upon seeing the world from a new height. I can see my tent from up here. Sophia continued squealing and giggling. Her one sobbing face replaced with a face of pure joy. Want to see the world from even higher heights. Sophia nodded immediately, and Issei jumped slightly. Soaring straight through the trees and into the sky, he was easily hundreds of feet into the sky. Still hanging on to the little girl, Issei watched as Sophia screamed in excitement and widened her eyes more to see the ever-extending view of the forest that she was in. Landing on the ground gently to make sure that Sophia wouldn't be hurt, Issei watched as Sophia hugged him tightly again. Artemis watched the exchange with a mixture of amusement and fondness, her earlier tension melting away in the warmth of the moment between her littlest child and her heroic figure, Issei, playing with each other. Seeing Issei interact with Sophia, with such kindness and patience, made her smile warmly as well. She couldn't help but. 
continue watching the scene. You truly are a remarkable young man. Artemis remarked, her voice tinged with admiration. To think that you could bring joy to a child even while they were traumatized. You truly care for children. Issei shrugged modestly, his attention still focused on Sophia's radiant smile. Of course, children are just so. Pure and innocent. Plus, it's hard to resist the charms of such an adorable little girl. Sophia beamed up at Issei, her tears forgotten in the glow of his praise. You're not a dummy, Mr. Issei. You're a hero. Placing her on the ground gently, Sophia pouted upon seeing herself being placed on the ground. Artemis. It was nice being here. But I have a couple of stray devils to deal with. I could come and help you. Artemis offered her help, but Issei shook his head. Don't worry. I'll deal with them alone. There's no need for a goddess to come and help. They're just regular stray devils. Issei just didn't want to split the experience points he would get. With that, he began walking away from Artemis and Sophia, not without patting the little girl on the head again. Reputation with Artemis exploded upwards. That's it guys. Thanks for watching and supporting us. See you in the next part.